I had a couple of people ask me, they're like, yo, uh, we want to do, a, you know, I want to do a podcast with you. I want to do a podcast with you. I'm, I'm not doing this again. Yeah. I'm not doing a podcast where I'm with people. I'll do my own. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to come on for regular segments and come chop it up. Well, they were asking you like that. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not doing it again. Because yeah. then I got to change the fucking That's name. That's always people that aren't ready to do it yet either. No. We should do it together. <laughs> That'll motivate me. Well, that's what happens. They say they want to do it together yeah, with yeah. you. And then you say, oh, yeah, well, we got to do one a week. Oh, the schedule is kind of crazy. Of it's like, oh, but we're like using all of the shit that I've already purchased. Yeah. So realistically, you don't have to worry about uh, yeah. that overhead that everyone else does. You just want the of fucking being able to sh shoot yeah. the shit. You just want social clips of yourself. Like it. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's great. But yeah, like at the yeah. same time, it's like, I don't know if you're actually ready to have those social clips go out there and get that criticism and get people yeah, that yeah, yeah. aren't always in your corner. Yeah, yeah. Because they're not always. Yeah, no, I even thought of that as a guest. I'm like. You got to be careful what you fucking say. You do. You, you know? do. You have to be very careful what you say. But at the same time, it's like if you are just real and transparent to exactly how you feel about just what you want to talk about. Like if there's topics that I get on with people that they don't want to talk about, I'm not here to probe. I'm right, not here. Right. And I have to explain this to some guests and, you know, not nasty explain it. I just tell everybody. I go, yo, I'm not here to like stir up shit. Like if I have yeah. – so like when Juji, when Juji Mufu came on, mm -hmm. when Juji came on – I just said, yo, if there's anything that you don't want me to touch or talk about, just let me know. And he said, uh, just don't talk about like an ex-partner or something like that. And I just said, didn't even, yeah, wasn't yeah. even going to think about talking right, about yeah. that. I have no idea. But like, it's crazy that you have to say those things because there are people that would interview somebody and intentionally try to get those. Yeah, yeah. Especially in the climate now. Try to get those reactions. That's Be fucking good. Yo, Juju Mufu blows up on the shit, podcast. Bro. He gets yeah. so mad. It's like, yo, bro. Like, yeah, yeah. this is what you're trying to do. Like, you have access to somebody with... Not only, not only is Juju an amazing human being, but it's like you have access oh, to something phenomenal. He's like dope. we told, we text each other and we we DM each other, and he's just yeah, an he's, absolute. He's a different breed of a fucking person. Oh, he's a, oh, he's a savage. Yeah. He's a savage in the gym, and then he's the funny thing is like you have the Juju move that everyone sees, and then you have the Juju move that like you get to know. Like I was a fan years ago. I never thought I would be hanging out and texting yeah, the yeah, guy. Yeah. And just like how Evan is going to Cam Haynes, Cam, yeah. I said, yo, that's crazy, bro. You got a fucking poster of him on your wall. That's yeah, insane. Yeah. <laughs> when you think about these things, that's yeah. an unbelievable monumental thing in your life that's exciting. Yeah. These people that are your idols or people that you look up to or that you enjoy their content or that inspire you to do your best work, you get to like be in the same room and be associated with them. It's like, I agree. What? what's going on yeah. here? Even for a while, I said with podcasts, it's just we just have such a crazy – ability to connect with people where like cam haynes previously was a guy that li lived in the in the trails and ran the trails we're, we're on the east coast he's on the west coast you would never get to see him or yep. or follow his stuff and speak with him so even having that layer is like something but then a lot of these guys have camp seminars in meetups and all these things so like if you're if you're doing your thing it, everybody else just becomes like peers yeah. Like you don't – like you think that they're on pedestals, but they're all usually super down to earth. They're they're class people, and they're like super willing to socialize with other people that are doing their thing too, which is I think that Cam thing kind of, you know. You forget that these people are human beings. You forget yeah, that yeah, they're yeah, just agreed. like – they're literally just us. Agreed. They just have a little bit more social awareness. Levels and yeah, yeah. They, they look good or yeah, they, they perform they, well or <laughs> yeah, better. But yeah, I think like especially as we've gone and to start – the network has grown – bigger, 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 you know, somebody that knows somebody, you can put me in touch with somebody and this guy knows somebody else. And this guy brought him through. And then everybody just becomes like a degree or a few degrees from of separation from like, oh shit, we're in the same room now, or we're, we're doing the same, we're in the same race. We're in the same, whatever now. And bonding over like similarities and yeah, like yeah. things, you know, that's the other crazy part. It's like, you have a passion for, you know, fitness and that has brought X amount of people into your life that have changed your life not only for the better but for i mean the networking capabilities yeah, of it on yeah, yeah. dude it's insane i mean i got you know i said that when i when i did the podcast with evan i i had said i i literally was introduced because silly was going to the gym and like i know tom and i know you're you're familiar with tom so it's yeah. like all these people it's crazy how the, the network it kind of just shrinks down down and then erica came on the podcast because alex larusso from empire nutrition She's like, oh, I would, I would love to come on and, and, and talk about my experience on, on the shows. And I was like, yeah. sure. And then she was going to you guys, and I was like, oh, shit, look at that. And then Evan followed me, and then so him and I started talking. Yeah. And it's just 
it's crazy how just the web. If you're a good person, no, because if you're a shitty person, nobody wants to be around you. <laughs> you burn the bridges, and then you don't yeah. you don't get the you don't get the prize at the yeah, end. Yeah, you don't want to like nobody wants to associate with you. So like when people, I guess people that have not the same networking capabilities because they're not as you know friendly and and yeah, yeah. and aware even, and good like, energy and yeah. whatnot, they don't understand that. But when you have good energy, I mean, it's it's insane how it just expands over. Oh, and this person shoots for monster, or this person yeah, exactly. shoots for that, and it's like. Oh shit! Like, hey, you want to do something for this brand? Hey, you want to do something for that brand? And yeah. he, because good people want to help good people. Even being around people now that that's normal. Like Evan going to hang out with Kim Haynes. And Crazy. Kev, our photographer, doing Sports Illustrated. Yo, I told him the swimsuit shit was dope. Yeah, we did high rocks. We had Meg Jacoby, the world record holder, high rocks, come through to the gym. So it's kind of like, it, again, the degree of separation thing. But all these people just become in in the network, and it's like. We, we can connect with them e easier than ever before. And especially when you get the validation of, oh, yeah, I go to this. Like you telling someone else to come now, not, the fact that it comes from you is like easy. So if, if if I need to connect from someone that's already established in the network, then everybody's so willing to, to lend a hand, point someone else this way, make help somebody else make some money, help somebody else make a friendship. So many times I'm like, oh, you guys would – you know this guy? You would hit it off with him. He, his training style, you would love this shit. Yeah. You should go check him out. Like, And then, yeah, it just it, it just grows from there, too. It's, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, there's there's so much opportunity for everybody. Agreed. Just for I was everybody. just thinking before, abundance. There's so much abundance. There's so, so much opportunity for everybody. Everyone can give and, and fucking and what you, serve each other, and we're, we're all in, in a good place at the end. Yeah, and what do you have to, like, gatekeep shit? Like, I agree. You know what I'm saying? Like, what, is it, what does it do? It doesn't do anything. And then yeah. you know what? You're just stuck in your little own world doing, your, doing the same shit over and over again where you could be doing things 10x in the next year or two just because you opened the gates and yeah. you said, oh, let me, let me help this person out. Let me do this. Let me do that. You know, it's, it's, it's stuff like this. Like, this is – I always give like a little – like a 10-second, 20-second excerpt like when I do the podcast. It's like I started this because I like talking to interesting people. Mm -hmm. I like talking to people that do really cool shit. And that have a real sense of authenticity about them because that's lacking a lot in the world nowadays. The authentic part is a missing piece of the puzzle. Yeah. So when you actually get to sit down with somebody and you get to talk about their journey and what they've gone through and, you know, they're doing amazing things either in their space, fitness, business, just life, it, it opens people's eyes to it. So I always wanted to be able to put the spotlight on other people. Yeah, it's my podcast, but at the same time, when I have a guest on, I don't want it to be about me. I want it to be about the person that's on. I want it to be about your journey, your story, because like, here's here's your here's your kudos for everything that you've gone through to get you to this point. Because everyone's journey is different, and not every single journey is uh, bumpy, free, you know, or yeah, smooth yeah. roads. You know what I'm saying? Be, yeah. Like that's one of the that's actually one of the canvases I'm getting in my new office. It's um, it's a canvas that I saw when I first got this space, and I really wanted to put it up, and I just Really didn't have the room, so I said, I'll wait. It's a ship going up like a vertical wave. And uh, what does it say? It says, um, smooth seas never made a skilled sailor. Yep. Love it. Agreed. You know, just the, every, all of our experiences, everything that we've gone through, it brought us to not only to sitting down and talking today, but just shaped us for what we do for others now. Yeah. As well. Agreed. But we've been on. <laughs> <laughs> I have to remind. I, I, I figured. I, yeah, I figured. I knew you figured. Um, that's kind of how I. I uh, it's I, easier that way. It's so much easier, man. Instead of doing an intro and, and kind of just, uh, hey, yeah, welcome, man. I got sick. Taylor. I'm not OG. good with that, man. Yeah, I'm not, we're I'm gonna have breaking ice. Nah, there's no there's no ice to be broken. We're good, man. I feel you know what? I feel like you are the mystery man at OG, and I've been intrigued. So once I had Evan on. I wanted to have Lenny on. I still do. I, yeah. I said, you know what? I got to get Taylor on, and Evan was like, "Yo, great idea, man. I got to get Taylor on. Talk about." training and all the different principles and whatnot that he believes in. And I want to hear it all. I do. But I got to kick it back to like who you are as a human. And first, I got to thank you for coming down yeah, bro. and, and you know, getting outside the comfort zone <laughs> doing a podcast. Thank you for having me. I was actually on the way. I'm like, fuck, I hope Nikki Rizzles is a good is a good host and he knows how to <laughs> ask questions because I'm not I'm not a uh, I'm not super forthcoming, but I'm very much transparent on like anything that I know that I would share, like you mentioned gatekeeping before, like I'm very much so like, this is what I think. This is kind of who I learned it from. Here's his school of thought. I've also like kind of abided by these laws previous to that. So I think I've went through so many things and mostly through like fitness, but I think through fitness and nutrition, those are like avenues that just taught me a lot and 
gave a lot of parallels to other things, but you start to realize like you just keep you keep finding like the thing over and over, and it's like oh this is like the thing the thing, and then you realize like you got sold something a lot of times, or like you bought into something that was like not the thing. Like maybe some things about it were useful for you to hold on to and keep doing, but we tend to just get or me for sure. I tend to just get wrapped up in it and I'm like, this is the thing. This is what I've been missing in my life. And like every, I can't believe everybody's not doing this. Like how's everybody not following this way of living and this diet or like this style of training. And then time passes and I realize I didn't quite get out of it what I was maybe sold on or I think some things just aren't going to, you just knock, I'm like, I'm not going to get into the NBA regardless of a training plan or a diet or something like that, that I follow. So I think I did so many, the things that now being on like the other side of it, it's easier to just say like, here's what I know. And I'm not super attached to this. And like, I'll have the conversation with you if you have a different idea about it. I maybe I've tried what you did too. Uh, I maybe haven't and I can learn something today. But I think previous, I would have been very much more rigid in terms of like, nah, this is what I think. This is the the way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's, that's how I was for a long time when I did the bodybuilding shit. The blinders right. were on, man. Yeah. I just I didn't want to hear any other way to do it. Yeah. If I heard anything about group fitness, I'm not I'm not like shitting on it or anything like that. For the longest time, and it was an F45 way before I even knew about you guys. I even think way before you guys were incorporated at at all. Um, I would think that it's corny and it's 100%. stupid and it's like, nah, fuck that, bro. I'm gonna get 100%. in the gym. I would I'm, still say that. <laughs> <laughs> really, and gonna, like, and I'm gonna do what I do, and yeah. I'm just gonna do my John Meadows workouts, or yep. you know, I'm 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 shooting videos at the time for Flex Lewis, and yeah. it's like I'm watching Olympian guys that are out here, best of the best, Kai Green, like. We're, we're shooting videos That's for them so, and, and, and we're idolizing them way before shooting videos and I'm able to like adapt their training styles to me. A little different on the protocol side, yeah. but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it, so you have to, that's something that I had to understand after a while as well. And that was something that I was blind to when I first yeah, started. I'm glad you mentioned that, honestly. Yeah, dude. I mean, I, I'm very transparent. Because you brought I, up authenticity before, and then I know you're you're very much involved in the fitness world. It's it's and, an interest, I, I, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm transitioning out of just doing the fitness stuff. Yeah, well, I see some of the hosts, I mean, the guests, some of the other guests that you've had. And yeah. so I was like, all right, I know this doesn't have to be just. Yeah, it's. I've had, especially since Evan came on, it's a very weird life transition. Um, I've had a very big epiphany, and the epiphany is I'm never going to be a bodybuilder anymore, and I just – I don't need to be. And for a long time, I associated myself with being a Bev's guy, a bodybuilder, like – Oh, like yeah. I'm that guy. Like we're going to all the fucking shows, you know, you know, all the top guys and throughout the industry and this and that. And it, you know, it's something to pride yourself on because of your network and the people that you get to associate yourself with. But at the same time, it's like outside of that small little world. And it seems like a big world, but yeah, it's not it's a it, right? small little world. No one gives a fuck. Yeah. No one cares how much you bench. Really? No one cares how <laughs> much you don't even deadlift. understand what the number would mean. They don't, they don't even know yeah. because when, you know, we look at it like we're in the fitness community. So we look at it as, Oh, it's shit. He throws up, he throws up, well, let's say 315 on bench, right? Regular fucking Joe is not going to understand what the hell that means. Yeah, like, I know. What yeah. does that mean? How many plates? Is it? Like, is that? <laughs> yeah, that, no, They'll be like, I could do that. What does that mean? Yeah, that doesn't sound like 315 <laughs> yeah, yeah. pounds. Like, I, know. I guess that's a lot. Like, they don't understand. But to us, because we're so enveloped with the actual world of fitness, it's like, yeah. we know these things off the cut and we think they matter and they don't matter. Like, so going from being super heavy, because I was 270 in high school, pre-diabetic. Really? Yeah. I was 270 pre-diabetic in high school. And then I dropped down, for those that don't know who might not have listened to other episodes, I dropped down from 270 to 190 in one summer. Jeez. I had gym summer school, two classes of it, because I didn't go to gym. I kept cutting and playing handball during the, during the semester. So I had to walk the track in July and August heat. And I just walked the track, and I just wound up doing like keto – turkey and cheese uh-huh. roll-ups. I didn't even know. I didn't even yeah, know that yeah. was keto. I had yeah. no fucking idea what it was, but I just didn't want carbs. Yep. Like, I was like, okay, let me cut carbs out. And a chiropractor that I was going to at the time, he introduced me to macros. And he said, yo, this is what a carb is, this is what a protein is, this is what a fat is. I said, okay, so this is 2008. This is before yeah. like real, if it fits your macros mm-hmm. and all these people came on the scene. So dropped the weight down to 190. About a year later, I met a girl, started eating out and not taking care of myself, not playing as much handball or going mm-hmm. to the gym. And I went back up to, in the, about a three and a half, four year span, I went back up to 240. Oh, shit. And I was, ba- I was away at college at Quinnipiac. I had just joined Bev's. You're how tall? 5'10"? 
Huh? You're five ten. Five ten. Five My nine. man. Now five. Okay. I'm like five eight. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, five, five eight two forty even is big, but five eight two seventy is is fucking big. Big man. Yeah. Big. So, um, so long story short, I I I said I just joined Bev's a year prior. I said I would really like to get in shape and do men's physique, and I yeah. dropped from two forty away at college, dropped from two forty to one fifty to step on stage in a year, and I was shredded. But at the time, I thought that I was doing things the right way, and I wasn't. I was treated like a guy on gear. I never took anything. Yeah. The hardest shit I took was a um, ECA stack, which is the ephedrine, ca- caffeine, and aspirin pill. That's the only thing. I, and it was like basically a fat burner. Right, yeah. That's all I took. That's the hardest shit I took during my prep. I didn't take Clen. Mm-hmm. I didn't take anything. And I was treated like a guy on gear. So like my body responded, but it collapsed after the show. And I went up 35 pounds three, four days after mm-hmm. the show. So I went from 150 to 185. Yeah. And it was all water. It was crazy. Actually, that was my phone. Metabolism probably shot. Everything. I had edema. My ankles were swollen. It was actually insanity. So I actually, somebody just asked me this recently. Boy, so I had, show you how I had the I had the picture saved. So I know you don't, you've never seen it. So this is what I looked like day of the show. Jeez. Crazy. Healed, yeah. Crazy. How old? 22. Yeah. Yeah, you look great. Three days later. Yeah. Crazy. Dude. Lines are gone. <laughs> I had no I, I had no idea what the, I had no idea. I thought, oh man, I just worked my ass off. I'm gonna have abs yeah, yeah. for a while. Nope, that's not how it works. So <laughs> so I I did what what only fitness competitors really know to do. You get excited for the next show. Right. It's like, oh my God, I'm gonna do another show. Do again. Get back in shape. <laughs> yeah. That's it. I'm gonna get back in shape. Yeah. Took an off season, did another show. And then after that, I had a burger after my show. Didn't look as good. wasn't as wasn't as dry. My body was shot still. wasn't as dry. Didn't look as good. I was lean, but not like that. Not crazy lean. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just said, you know what? I'm good on this. Uh, I'm uh, I'm I'm done on this. I had a burger and fries after my show, and that was it. And over the years, and this is getting to functional fitness. <laughs> I promise. I'm with you. <laughs> For those listening, I promise. I'm gonna let Taylor speak. I promise. <laughs> so over the years, I. I tried a couple times to get back in and do shows. And there were a couple times where I looked insane. And six, seven weeks out from the show, I would talk to my guy down in Florida. He's a doctor uh, who is the guy I wish I was working with from day one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'd send him progress pictures and I'd be like, eh. Like, it's like, dude, you look great. Like, what's, what's <laughs> wrong? I said, I don't want to do this shit, man. I'm yeah. good on this. He goes, you sure? Yep. He goes, you're lean for summer. Enjoy. Go, go eat. Okay. And that was the last time. That was in 2016. Mm-hmm. That was the last time I tried to do a show. And then now, now that I've been lean, getting leaner from you guys and just training my fucking dick off and jujitsu and just yeah, everything, yeah. it's like now I'm getting lean again. People have been hit. Oh, you're going to do a show? Yeah. Fuck yeah, no, yeah. You dude. Can, you can bodybuild without competing. I can just look good and I can look. And, and the best part about it is I look good and I'm functional. Yeah. Like when I'm that lean for a show, I don't feel good. I'm tired. I mean, Everything hurts. Like yeah. I, I want to go to bed. I'm cranky. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm food, your hormones are all shot. I'm food starved. Like I just, I don't want to do anything. And yeah. that's part of, you know, they'll say the journey, but it's, it doesn't have to be that you can be lean and you can look really good and you can still be a pleasure to be around and you don't have to be an asshole. Like right. you can eat. Yeah. It's another side of it. Too. You can still eat good foods. Yeah. So when we talk about the industry and how it's changed over the course of that 2016 to now, my viewpoints and opinions have changed. My boy Jamal, he's taught me to box a little bit, the jujitsu, mm. stuff with uh, Tom, you yeah. guys. During COVID, I got a bunch of stuff in my garage. I, lo- I moved out of my mom's house, so it's all there until yeah. I get a house. But I have landmines. I got kettlebells all the way up to 120 pounds. Like I got a- an assault bike, which yeah. before I started doing it, you guys, I couldn't do that thing for more than 30 seconds. Now they're like, oh, yeah. Uh, mile, mile scorch. I go, I can probably do this in a minute and a half. Let's yeah, go. And I start yeah, yeah. Tr- trucking it. So it's just crazy how that switches. I mean, what was your experience when you first started in fitness? I, were you super skinny and you wanted to get in shape? Were you heavy? Were like, had it, what, what piqued your interest to get you into the field? We're talking uh, like young. Like, yeah. You know, so, I mean, if you're, if we're talking young, my dad, my dad was a bodybuilder. Oh shit. My growing up, my dad was a bodybuilder. He was 
he would use the type of person who would work out on vacation. Like he was, fitness was his was a big part of his life, and I was I was very well aware of that. And uh, he's a big guy. Like he was six, he is maybe a little shorter now, but he was six four, and like big two forty and big yeah. bodybuilder fucking body, you know. And um, so I was exposed to it for a long while. I really was just interested in playing sports. Like I was a baseball, basketball, football, high school athlete. Like good athlete, like not like the best maybe, but like good athlete, good all around. Yeah, would just you, good, just good all around. What'd you like to play the most? Um, it kind it kind of just varied. Honestly, if I could have if I could have been anything, I'd be in the NBA, like for sure. And then I think second, I would be in the NFL. Damn. <laughs> um, if I could if I could choose, I th- I honestly think if I uh, this is maybe wrong, but I think if I had a if I was like six foot four, I think I could have had a much different shot at it because I I think I was like decently athletic for a fucking five foot ten white kid from suburbs. Um, yeah, I'm the epitome of white when I play basketball. My dad played for St. John's. I got none of those genes. Yeah, I mean, sometimes wow. it just skips you. Oh man, it is tough out here. I'm the dude that's Kobe, and I'm yeah. like hitting, I'm hitting yeah. people on the court on the side. Yeah, so we were good. We were we were ranked. I think maybe like top ten in the state at one point. High and you played for which West which, Babylon High School? Oh, West Babylon. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, I never, I didn't care about weight. Like I, we had to go to weight room for football. Like I hated that shit. Like I didn't like lifting weights. I just liked being athletic more so than anything. And I think I got, as I got probably a little bit older from there, when I went to college, I had a really cool exercise science professor. His name was Dr. Jacob Wilson um, in University of Tampa. And he started kind of like introducing me to more of the science of bodybuilding and like doing lab studies on how to grow muscle and how to like improve athletic performance, things like that. So I did a like voluntary study with him and um, we got like a free gym membership and a free personal trainer that was like super high level. I'd worked with like NFL guys and we got a nutrition plan with macros and all these things. So that was like my first dose of real real fitness like i had worked out with my dad previous but it was always it was always more like to bond with him really than like i didn't have some fitness passion at the time which is awesome because you know a lot of dads should be bringing their kids in the weight room and teaching them these things and yeah like he exposed me young for sure he never really forced anything on me he was always very much with sports like if you like it like i'll have the catch with you and i'll help you practice and like if i said like i don't want to go i want to quit the team he'd be like what all right like you should but like i'm not going to make you go if you don't want to go so he's he was never the he was never like the little the pushy, yeah he was wasn't like the pushy parent screaming and shit or like forcing me to go do something when I when I dreaded it like or yelling at me on the way home or any of those things he was like a very very nice like, do what you want to do I'm here for you if you want to do that type it's of awesome. thing you know so um yeah I, th- I just think for a while fitness was maybe to improve sport and then I started learning that fitness was. Like, I just always liked bodybuilders, too, because my dad, like, growing up, that's kind of, like, what I was around. I always thought physique was was really cool and just, like, guys that built physique. I was I was very into WWF when I was younger and just fucking guys that were just, yeah, I got see Stone, the shirt. All I see the Stone shirt. Holding the Rock and all these guys. <laughs> so, I'm like, there was definitely, like, uh, a lot of, like, seedlings planted, I think, in my, in my young brain for, like, getting big and strong and, and being an athlete and things like that. And I, I wish I could have been more of an athlete by by career, but um, I think this is th- what I'm doing now is like definitely what I, if I could choose something to be doing, it's what I'd be doing. Kind of I have a tangible place where I can express the things that I like and, and teach people and show people things. Um, what were some of the things you saw at, at the um – the sports science in Tampa, like what are the, some of the things that they taught you that really piqued the interest? Um, a lot of like, uh, honestly, a lot of it's wrong now. Like looking back at it now, like with the newer science that we have, like things that I learned then, a lot Crazy of it how was things wrong, get phased out. Like yeah, that. they just pretty much like it was my first uh, introduction to the fact that there was any science in in bodybuilding. Like growing up with my dad, like they they didn't use they didn't use science they had like the arnold arnold had an encyclopedia and they like would read it and do what he was doing but like there wasn't really mu- much money to be made and there wasn't really much status with being bodybuilders it was very very niche um so I, it was my first intro i liked science already like i was not a nerd but i always did well in school and i and i liked i liked science teacher liked, interest yeah exactly it, it just was interesting which is me. awesome when you start to align with things and you start feeling a certain type of way because you you start to say well i don't like this i don't like this but this is this is kind of what i'm i'm enjoying learning more about and the more you learn about it the more you want to tell other people about yeah, it and that's yeah. how it 
it gets to be the passion. Especially with my dad. I'm like, oh my God, I could teach him all these things. Like, and he's always been like, obviously on a pedestal for me in the bodybuilding world, but I'm like telling him things that I learned. And he's like, oh, I never tried that. And we would try them and he'd be like, oh, that was sick. You know? So I'm like, <laughs> oh, I'm a fucking genius. I'm, I know everything about bodybuilding science now. Um, but, but I think just in general, the fact that there was, a, that, that science existed, that you could test things. And that was my first idea of like, some things work better than others. And like a lot of, a lot of bro science is maybe wrong or, or a lot of things that I had heard, they had taught me through the class. Like, no, we studied this and like, that's not true, you know? Um, and again, a lot of that stuff changed now, but I ha I have a much more open mind to a lot of those things now. Whereas before I would have been like, this is the way, this is the rep range you need to use. And I, I learned it. They published this this thing and this is how it is for study i saw lane norton talk about yes, it I exactly swear to god yeah, it's real yeah. it's real right so now I, I just think i can weigh things better and i and i still very much take a like sciencey based approach to lifting where I, I like as much proof for something to be doing something as i could do it but i also have a, a much uh I'm, I'm a lot more confident now to just do something that that felt good that it's it's amazing i get to work with people now because i can just try things and I, I worked with a few really cool coaches that would just test things and be like, let's try this. Like, you know, just see how it goes. We'll do this for a few weeks. And if not, we'll adjust the plan. And I, I thought that was way more realistic than here's the system. This thing works. And if you just follow the nine step program and do the movements, then you'll get to, to the end result. And so many times I'd be like, I'm not getting it. And they'd be like, well, you must be doing it wrong. Yeah. You know, and not so, tracking the right way. Or right. Not so many times right I would way. deny what was right in front of me because I'm like, but, but this guy is freaking doing it himself and he's, he's doing what I want to do. And like, so why, why can't I squat 900 following this guy's program? Like, it's not making sense that I'm not adding the right amount, you know, kind of from week to week. So I, th I think I have a much uh, more, more like realistic there's, there's paper, there's science, and then there's real life too. And there's like so many things that we can't explain or that we wouldn't even have the science to maybe look at kind of type of thing. But that was, that was my onboarding into, into more like professional fitness, like looking at it through a different lens of trying to understand things more instead of previously just doing whatever, whatever my dad told me or whatever the program told me, like do this movement for these many reps and then do something else next time. And I would just follow it, follow it, follow it, follow it. Um, and the body adapts. And, and it's, cra it's crazy when you talk about things like, you know, somebody giving you a plan and then you're doing it to the T and you're not seeing the results and they go, well, you're not. It's like, no, 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 no. This, this is, this is kind of what people are waking up to now. They're waking up to the fact that a lot of this shit's cookie cutter. Yeah. And a lot of the shit that you're fed in magazines, and that's why magazines aren't as prevalent anymore in a lot of, a lot of different ways. Like people go to the research studies now and they, they want the science backed approach because like when a dude just tells you do 12 reps for four sets and do the next thing, it's like, Oh my God, well the other fucking dude on Instagram said the same shit. It's like, dude, what, yeah, how yeah. is this different What's than anyone, anyone else yeah. is saying? Like what? Oh wait, like, you know, you're a 250 pound bodybuilder and you're taking X, Y, Z. Right. Yeah. That's why you look that way. And that's why I look this way. It was the same thing I said. I forget which episode I said it. It was like the last one or two, whatever one. I look back on it now as a photographer and a video guy in the industry and how I was duped and, and fed lies when I was yeah. a younger little kid, fat little kid in high school, just starting to lift. And I was looking at these fucking images on these magazines. Not only did I not know what the main guys were taking and what they were doing, but the bullshit progressing photos of just like, this dude yeah, took yeah. hydroxy eight cut for eight weeks and look how shreddy he's on the right. I'm like, I'm like, oh man, I want to get yeah. shredded. So like, you know, you go out and you buy fucking diet pills as a little kid and you're swallowing diet pills. Who knows what kind of damage that could have yeah, done to me? Yeah. No idea, but I'm sitting here believing this bullshit. So that type of shit irritates me. It was just like my body, my coach when I competed. Fed me dreams. Yeah, yeah. I'll never mention his name on the podcast. I'll tell you afterwards because you may know him throughout the industry. <sighs> Can't stand him. He doesn't even worth. He's not even worth the airtime to say his fucking name because I don't even want to give him any notoriety. Yeah. But he was just another guy, another bro science guy, putting a natural guy on over three hundred grams of protein a day when I'm hundred and fifty pounds. Are you fucking insane? You gotta, you gotta make sure you're getting enough, dude. <laughs> insane. Yeah, he's like, damn, this is there ain't no way this kid's growing without 
double body weight protein. I was cutting. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's at insane. least you're not going to lose any muscle. Yeah, bro, yeah, well, thank God. But, you know, my right kidney shut down twice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's insane how that happened. But it, 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 it's that type of situation where, you know, they see this, they see these guys on the grand stage of the Olympia or on the magazine covers or this and that. And somebody just goes, wow, if I follow this program, I can yeah, yeah. compete at that level and I could look like that. And there's just so much smoke and mirrors throughout the fitness industry that it's like, guys, just be fucking real. Yeah, I agree. Just say like, you know, when, when people like, who, who was the liver king? Yeah, yeah. What? Here's another one. He duped me because I'm like, because I was Stop, very no. bought into the lifestyle of carnivore for oh, previous. God. And then I was off the carnivore wagon after by the time that he was doing all these things. But I'm just thinking to myself like, man, maybe, maybe if you really, really, really dial into these ancestral ways and you're just like getting sunlight on your balls and you're fucking <laughs> eating liver sun, and raw sun, eggs. Your perennium. And you're eating brain and you're like... <laughs> You have no EMFs. I'm like, maybe this is just like peak human condition. If, if you if you if you do all this shit, and then obviously it's not. Uh, I mean, to some extent, yes. I think all of that stuff definitely helps. Of, of you, course, without question. But, but this is me being like, this is the thing. Like yeah. the, the tenants are the thing. Like if you just follow, then you get the end result that this guy's selling you. And like, all right, let me buy the organs and let me like go all in with all this shit. And you're right. Like it, it could help for sure. Oh, without question. I so I I I believe in more animal based stuff and keeping it natural and getting fruits as your carbs and whatnot. I mean, let's talk about that for a second. How how could that be incorrect? The things that are so not even I don't want to use the word primal. I just the things that are just so instinctual for us to eat, like consistent with what we evolved with. And and yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. then you'll have people that's you know. Now I'm getting all the fucking people on TikTok saying you should be on all fruit diet. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. guys, I can't, I, I can't keep switching. You gotta like give me a few days. <laughs> gotta- yeah, no, I actually know somebody that's a, he's like an older guy. He does a lot of breathwork stuff, but he's a he's a pretty incredible specimen all of a fruit? person. And he's on all fruit and like some like algae. Yeah, it's crazy or something like that. And but- I think and I think that this applies to the conversation that we're just having in terms of like you have to find things that work for you. Yeah. Because a cookie cutter approach doesn't work for everybody. Because my mom, who maybe doesn't digest the the meat as well or whatnot, she may you know maybe it 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 works for her in the long run, but she doesn't want to get past that right. initial or in the pro- short run or yeah, yeah maybe it does maybe it doesn't but you have to try things. Yeah, like, that's I agree. the most important thing. Try it out, see if it works for you. Like especially fitness stuff too. You have to try certain programs out, and and then a couple of weeks, maybe a month or two in, you go, "This isn't uh, my arms right. hurt all the time, my shoulder hurts, but like I'm I'm good on this. It's, I'm not seeing any results, or I'm overtraining myself, right. not overtraining as a whole. Just my body's shot, like I'm tired. So you have to be able to adapt and switch things around. But since I've been I've been fasting a lot lately. Yeah, I was into very much into that for I was a little fasting while. Fasting a lot too. lately, doing two days and three days. And- I didn't do a two or three day. I did yeah. a twenty four hour. Um. I feel good when I do it. I, it's, I feel oddly good. Yeah. like The only thing I get worried about is like my blood sugar dropping too much. That's the only thing I get worried about. Um, I drink my water and I have the uh, electrolyte drops. The what is Element it? or? Not element. I know you guys have IV. element there. No, it's in that uh, trace minerals. I have oh, trace yeah, mineral yeah, drops. Okay. They're good, man. Uh-huh. I put them in my dog, Kenji. He's got, C- he's got epilepsy. So I put the drops into his water. So it's the potassium and, and sodium is supposed to help that yeah, as yeah. well with the brain function. Um, and then I had no idea that, you know, filtered water, it strips everything out of it and you have to remineralize it. Otherwise it takes them out of you. It's like, I, there's just so much shit that's crazy. But once again, it goes back to the, all of these different arguments and all these different theories on what's the best way to live. Yeah. You know, we're leaps and bounds ahead of people that are just shoving Mac- McDonald's in their face and not going to the gym and not getting any sunlight and not doing anything. It's like, we're, we think that we we think that we're like in the middle or in the back of the pack, but like we're in the front, dude. Yeah, like it's, yeah. it's crazy. It's when- hard not to like uh, every time that you're kind of grow another tier higher, you have like a new, not pool of competition, but your peers are like higher level people, yeah. you know? So even like we were just talking about before, now so many people I know have also very high level friends and peers and the more that we we rise as a brand and, and us as individuals and the, the peers also, you, you just become around more people that are also doing super high level stuff. And I, it's sometimes a little bit 
it works in both ways, but it's hard sometimes not to be like, fuck, man, all these other guys are like so much stronger than me. And you like have great numbers, but comparisons that you are like, joy. yeah. And you're like, I'm in the back of the pack, you know, from, from the legends. Like I would say, somebody has got to be the worst in the NFL or the worst in the NBA. And like, these guys are top 0.1% of athletes in the world, but in their own life, they probably struggle. Like I'm not that good. And like, Everybody, man. We yeah. all have those issues. Right. So just right. scales to where you're at. Essentially. And, it, and, it, and it's, it's throughout life. My boy Josh came on. I know it's not his quote, but he's the one who said, like, I just said it. And I'll say it again. Comparison is the thief of joy. Mm-hmm. Right? It really is, man. And that's for creative work too, man. How many photographers and video guys are there? Yeah, Talk yeah. about it all the time. Yeah. And there's a lot of really good ones. Yeah. Kevin's great. Like, there's yeah. a lot of really good ones. And I, you can't look... The thing that you do when you first first start is you look at everybody's competition. Yeah, you yeah. can't. I don't look at everybody's competition. I hear you. Once again, the abundance. There's Keep more than up doing your own thing. Bro, there's, there's more than enough for work for everybody. Too, yeah. There's more than enough work to share. Yeah. When I can't get to a shoot, sometimes I recommend people. Right. I, I, and it just bubbles still nicely for everybody. Sometimes there's just too the much other. work, man. Yeah. And you gotta you gotta show love to everybody because yeah. we're all just on this fucking planet trying to do our best. So, you know, the comparison thing's tough. The comparison thing, you try to stay in your lane and focus on what you're doing, but we're humans. Yeah. You're going to, you're going to look at other people that are similar to you that are doing the same thing that, are, and you're going to say, Oh shit. But at the same time, that's also, like you said, it's going to start ticking that level up because you're going to have to match that energy or get left behind. Right. Like it works in your favor. Sometimes if you let that pressure kind of, then you rise to the occasion, maybe a little yeah. bit, but uh, it's funny you mentioned Kev. Cause he texted me today about, uh, uh, um, Hey, you should start a, you should, I, I just, I know maybe this is crazy, but I see all these guys doing content like you should really start to put your content out. I feel like you you know a lot and you can you can do like just like they're doing. And I'm like, I know, but I think they have like such nice like they make it look so nice and so presentable. And I'm com- comparing like I don't I don't know like that's that's my friction point is like, I can film myself doing a set, but yeah. then like now I got to make a piece of content out of this. I got to maybe talk voice over it or mic it or and write a, write a caption for it and things like that. And I'm like, I don't know. I think these these guys are just doing really well. I don't know if I could do it. And he's like, you shouldn't worry. You shouldn't worry about it. Like I've seen some of them that aren't put together that nicely and they have lots of people that listen to them and, and enjoy the content. So like, you should just do it. And I, I didn't even answer him. Sorry, Kev, but <laughs> I'm like, you're, you're fucking right. It's there's, all love. There's Here nothing it is. else I could say besides like, you're right. And I want to, I want to do that type of thing. But when it comes down to it, it's just, it's just a matter of putting the stuff out there mm-hmm. and it doesn't, it doesn't matter how grand the scale of production is a lot of the time. It just matters about getting it out there because your first video might not hit. Right. Your second Probably video <laughs> might not hit. Yeah. Your third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth might not hit. But if you keep – and when you keep it consistent and you continually put stuff out there, bro, some of my podcast shit gets – on TikTok especially, millions. Right. Some of it? Yeah, yeah. Hundred. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever. I'm going to keep putting shit out. Like if I waited and I hate to compare myself to Joe Rogan because I, I – I mean, I'm nowhere in the fucking league, not even close, but it's like, when you look at somebody like that's a standard, a guy that's making that much loot has that caliber of guests and friends yeah, yeah. around him. You know what I'm saying? Like it's highest tier of where you could kind and of production be in the value. Industry, yeah. He's got a guy running the boards for him. He doesn't have to continually Studio check. Sick, yeah. yeah. He doesn't have to continually check the cameras yep. and th- he gets to focus on the interview. So like if I waited to get to that point, I'd never start. Mm-hmm. So I have to be able to just start say, Nick, we got to start somewhere. So like my first podcast fucking sucked yeah this is gonna be 60 episode 61 i think we're do. i mean i'm i think i'm much better i i get a lot of people that say they good. love it and this and that <laughs> yeah. and the guests and whatnot yeah, yeah, yeah. you know I, I still have a long way to go i'm not in this for the short gains and the short the short term I, i'm not looking at this like uh if i don't get a million views on the podcast episodes themselves by the end of the year i'm throwing the towel in stop yeah like, no, man you got to keep it going because like I have you on, then a couple people listen and they go, oh shit, he had Erica on. And they start listening to some of the episodes and mm-hmm. they connect with some of the content. My girl, my girl Marina, she's amazing. I, I love Marina. She she came on the podcast. She talked about her double mastectomy. Like, that's crazy yeah, yeah. that women can associate with that. And that's a that's such an important message to get mm-hmm. out about her finding lumps and whatnot. And, you know, she has a um she has a, a medical business in um, Huntington. Mm-hmm. So she does acupuncture, cupping, scraping, all that stuff. Then it plugs her business and then it goes round and round. Like I want to, I want to plug OG. People ask me all the time where I train and shit like that. I tell them, I haven't gone back to bed. I go to OG. It's just easy. I go in the morning. I I fuck I fuck the workout up. I leave. And then I go to Sarah's later and I get my joints popped out of place. Like it's fun. It's a good time. It's a good mix of things. I want to put everybody on and keep it going. But if you don't get to that, you know what I'm saying? Like if I never started, this episode never happens. Her episode never happens. So 
little little live advice, just shoot the content. Yeah, no, you're right. I'm telling you, shoot the content. And then you can use AI. You could use AI to write the captions for you. Yeah, that's the next. It's fucking easy, chapter, dude. Yeah. Oh, it's so easy. It's so stupid. It's so easy, it's man. Scary. <laughs> All you got to do is say, I need a caption for me doing a bench press. And right. it'll write a whole thing for you. You don't even think about it. It's scary. And you can pick out of it what you right, want to right, actually yeah. put into it. Use that. it just for inspiration. You, so you could use it as just a template because uh -huh. that's really what it is. Like it's, it still doesn't have that humanistic, mm -hmm. you know, real, real, real person yeah. behind it. And it never will theoretically, but it's pretty crazy how wild it is in this stage of the game. So I wonder what they're not showing us yet. Yeah, yeah. Because it's always like when they start rolling things out to the public, it's like, okay, well, what do they have behind closed doors? Yeah, That's I what mean, I want to know. I think there's probably boundless uh, entries for using oh. this technology to change every industry. It's nice because it takes the monotony out of certain things. I hate writing captions on posts. Right, right. I hate you it. You can automate things. and You can automate. Not only yeah. can you automate things, you can tell it like I need a SEO driven, a search engine optimized driven caption, mm -hmm. which will help you get found easier. Right. So like the last couple episodes, I've been using it. Yeah, it's I, doing what professionals would maybe do for you anyway. Yeah. it's And you know what? Maybe not to the extent because I still believe that the professionals do a better job than this because mm -hmm. this is very well, once, we go honestly, cookie cutter. Professionals are leveraging this too. So uh -huh. if you're a professional and you have the best of both and- that's what it winds up being. It winds up taking the monotony out of the bullshit work, mm -hmm. the little things that I don't want, I don't have or or want to yeah, do yeah. because I'm so slammed or because you're so slammed with how many sessions in a day you guys do. Yeah, I realize so many people have a big team behind them too, a big oh, yeah. content guy. You know, a lot of these big guys and 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 guys and girls both, but have a big team. Even though even the whole Liver King thing was like was like a it was like foretold previously, and he had if you, I don't remember, you know, Derek from More Plates More Dates. Yep, and he kind of broke that whole story. Like Liver King had asked him maybe like a year previous, like, we're going to do a social media campaign. I'm going to get juiced up and I'm going to get jacked and we're going to get like a million followers by like this date. And it worked like clockwork. And he had like a, you know, obviously like a team behind him. And um, I had Greg on a couple episodes ago, Greg um, Helton, yes. Sup, Mr. Supwolf. Uh -huh. And he was talking about the Shreds guys. Remember Shreds? Shreds. With Supplement a Z? company Shreds. <laughs> I, it's, it Shreds, they, had, they had a how they had like an apartment complex where they would have all their content creators live in the same house as the mm. editors and the shooters and they would just shoot shit around the clock yeah everything under their thumb like mm -hmm. everything was done in-house right then and there team that's why they were so so widely successful yeah they were able to do all their campaigns right then and there they were able to Give each other feedback and oh the video didn't look good go back downstairs and shoot it again yeah, like you're yeah. right you're Just living fucking in right there it doesn't get much easier than that you don't have to reschedule like we do a shoot it's like oh shit man this was a little out of focus I want to shoot this again oh when are you available again no 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 we walking downstairs yeah, and yeah. we live here like this is the content Let's get better house. it's crazy man yeah. but that's that's the unseen you know nobody wants to talk right. about thing and that's a lot of the things with these content and these podcasts too they have teams behind them yeah they yeah. got they have dudes working the whole set behind. Getting guests, uh, putting right, all the right. clips Taking out, care of everything. doing everything. Yeah, you realize how helpful it is to outsource, like, oh yeah, things that you're not the best at or that you don't care to do. And now with like, so like, real quick, uh, last thing on AI. So let, let's say, so you talk about outsourcing. So let's say it costs me five hundred dollars to have this dude chop some clips up for me, but AI charged me twenty, and it's not perfect, but it gets the content out. Yeah, I'm not saying that. It's, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying, oh, I, mean, I think just the you time, can't ignore it. <laughs> you can't ignore it, yeah. but like the time to cost ratio, chop some clips up for me real quick, yeah. please. Like just do it. So this way I don't have to, cause then that guy may come back and I'd be like, ah, oh, change this, change this, do this, that, this, I don't have to worry about nothing. Yeah. Just put it in the system, it does it for me. And I go, okay, cool. Let's distribute. It, it's got a lot of applications and it's yeah. very interesting how it's expanding. I'm going to have to explore. Yeah. I'll, I'll show you some stuff before you leave. I'll show you, I'll show you the stuff that I, that I use. Um, so I want to get back to you in Tampa, learning down there. Uh, what were you doing? How old were you? You know, did you graduate so, down there? Yeah, I was in college. I went to college, uh, for athletic training at first because I, I didn't know what I wanted to be. And that was like, kind of, I was like, oh, I'll, I'll work like with athletes. Like I'll rehab athletes. I'll be an athletic trainer for like a pro team or something like that. And that'll be like my next best thing to like playing in the game itself. I'll just be like helping them, you know? And then, um... It was like a big workload. Like I wasn't, I, it, was, it was too much. I'm like, I thought I'm going to college, not like, I don't have any time to do my, to, to have fun. Like, so then I switched from athletic training to physical therapy because it was close and I had already taken like a, I don't know, a semester or two. And uh, so, yeah, I did four years of uh, 
physical therapy, got a bachelor's, and then it would come time after you graduate to go and like uh, I guess go back to school and get another get your doctorate, and then become an assistant somewhere, and that was kind of like the standard road. But I never really wanted to be like a physical therapist very much in the first place. Um, so actually, when I when I finished from Tampa. Pretty much right around the maybe two weeks a month prior. This was maybe bubbling for a little bit, but my family had my mom and my uh, dad and my sister had just opened a the cryotherapy business, cryology. Oh, nice. Um, so when I finished, when I graduated college, I went home like the next day, and they were like, "We need we need some help like to to run this thing." So I was like, "All right, this is perfect." I went for physical therapy. I would need to go back to school to be a physical therapist, but this is like an avenue for me where I can kind of like practice the rehab stuff but without like i'm not hands-on like manipulating you know, yeah whatnot, like touching yeah. people or anything like that but i'm like giving them holistic therapy services that i'm like walking them through basically which is awesome because now you have the basis and the knowledge yeah so that's it served me for a little a lot while of people that and, would work in a place like that they might not right and so people would say oh you're like oh it's perfect that you went to school for that and i'm like i didn't learn shit in school <laughs> like this it was such a fucking waste i could have learned all this shit on my own anyway that's how I feel. and i pretty much self-taught everything from in that world anyway because Obviously, you learn you learn plenty in school. Just I, it wasn't really to me very many useful things. I think I took like a, a handful of classes that actually I felt like I had some idea about how I don't know to diagnose injury or to like maybe some ideas of treatments and things like that or or understanding learning the body things like that. It's crazy. They're like Apple. They're gatekeeping all the next features every year. It's like kind, oh, kind of yeah. Come back next year. You know, we'll teach you the next <laughs> more or less. Yeah, shit. in a lot of ways. Yeah, like all right, it'll get serious. Like when you go to doctorate school, you'll start really learning oh, like damn. therapy. How, how you much know? do I have to fucking spend? But now? yeah, like and then that's seven years later. Like and I don't. It, should, it shouldn't take you that long to learn like the specifics of what you need. I think you got to learn a lot through the experience and the practice. So you need to get onboarded and then like go and learn. So then I had this whole other avenue of of holistic health and learning about all these non Western therapies like the cryotherapy and then like the infrared sauna and the red light therapy and like vitamin IVs and all these kind of like random things. So that just kind of like served me nicely. But the whole time I was like, people would say, what do you, what do you want to do? Like when I was like treating them there, like, what do you want to do with your life? And I'm like, I don't know, like I'm here full time. This is my family business. <laughs> I, you know? this, uh... I kind of own like a portion of it basically because I had worked my, my way into some, uh, some small ownership of it. And um, so I'm like, I don't this is what I do. Like, I just want to grow it, really, because I think I, I saw from a business standpoint, like, this could be a hot thing. This could be, like, a big thing. So we actually kept opening more of them. At one point, I had five of them. Oh, yeah. And life was, like, terrible at that point. It was, like, just so, just so much work. And I wasn't really passionate about it, but I just saw it as maybe, like, a stepping stone to sell this one day and just walk off like you know ride off and in, into the sun right into type the of thing. like i'll be young and <laughs> I'll, I'll just conquer this industry and then like i'll just you know sell it to some medical place eventually and what was the difficult part was it the just balancing all the different um, locations balancing everything yeah because it was really just me and my sister that ran things so at one point we had basically two people running five like separate facilities that were fairly spread out so and you're booking appointments and you know you have the yeah like side of we things. were basically doing and like the, the the way that the staffing worked there you'd, you'd basically do everything you'd work the desk and the computer but people would come in you'd greet them you'd be their service you're their personal basically therapist even though that's it's not medical so you uh, you can't really use those terminology per se but yeah so it, it was like we were working in it. We were trying to work on it. We were trying to manage. And it was just like, it was, it was too much for me. And I, I, uh, it wasn't something that I started on my own really. So I didn't, I never felt like it was like mine, mine where I needed to like do anything to not let this dream die type of thing. Like Makes there sense. was so many times where I was like, fuck this. Like, I don't want to do this. Working with family was kind of hard. Working with my sister was, was hard. Like in a lot of ways, we just would butt head on, on, on a lot of things. And, um, so actually, like now I work with friends, which it's like it's actually it's it's much better. <laughs> no, um, no, no shade at like my family, obviously, but no, no. That, I think working with friends, you've had these experiences too, can also be really difficult. I, I think it's challenging whenever you have another party involved in running anything, right? And in general, in general, because there's I, always going to be disagreements. There's right. always going to be thoughts on you know making sure everyone pulls their own weight and does right, what they right. specialize and in and whatnot. It, yeah. And you want to make sure that you know. No one's no one's sitting there with you know 
80% of the workload on their plate. And unfortunately, that happens. Yeah. But when you have a good circle and you got good people around you and you tell people, they're receptive to the feedback. You can just be like, oh, guys, this is kind of crazy. I'm doing X, Y, Z. You know, I know you're handling this, but something's got to give because my time is being taken advantage of in certain ways. Mm -hmm. And when you have good people around you, they understand that. They they don't take that feedback as an attack against them. They right. take it as a, oh shit, let me, let me step my shit up, let me help out. So, and family's tough. Family can be very tough for anybody. I think there's a lot of instances where people say, don't go into business with family or don't do this, don't do that. You know, mom and pop shops, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, it's rooted in there, but it's the behind the scenes that stuff that people don't get to see. And, and, and I believe that that happens more so than not. Yeah. Yeah. I think at this point, like looking back now, it's much better to, to for me to have the, those things separated. Yeah. Which is good. Cause it, it, um, it takes the stress out of all that. And then you're actually excited to see everybody instead yes, of like, yeah, fuck, yeah. I gotta have yeah, this conversation. Yeah. We can never, we can never let it go. But otherwise now, yeah, I work with like my two best friends, which is a, a much more refreshing dynamic because they're, they're very respectful of me and the things that I have to say and the changes that I maybe would like to make or suggestions that I have and things like that. And, and I just felt like before that wasn't maybe taken as uh, like seriously or, or um, you know, when you feel like you have something to give and then it's like shot down or rejected, you don't, it's hard to keep giving or to keep wanting to, to give into that pot when you just feel like, I think this is probably like with small business anyway and entrepreneurship anyway, where you just feel overworked and underpaid a lot and like you're doing the most and obviously you don't get that instant return almost ever unless you just get really, really lucky right away. But otherwise you just eat shit for like a while and you and you put in a lot of work and you do things that eventually like you won't be doing, you'll be paying somebody else or somebody else will be begging you to kind of take on that role for you type of thing. But I think, yeah, you just got to you got to eat stuff for, for a little while before you see that. Well, you paved the way. You're the one with the vision. Yes. Yeah. You're yeah. The one with the vision. You're the one that's making the connections. You're the one that's literally keeping the business afloat no matter what. Like, yeah. you know, you can have a great product. You can have a great service, whatever it is. But like people buy into people yeah. when it comes down to it. So when when they come to your gym or they come to me for a video or photo, they come to us for us. They yes. don't, yeah. You know, they can get a video or photo from anybody. Yeah. Like I'm not saying that. I'm the best in the world. I'm nowhere agree. near. I'm nowhere near the worst. Yeah. And it's just, it's, it's, it's just like that with training as well. There's a lot of training studios, but y'all hit it off. Yeah, yeah. I always say like you can, you can. We, well, I will give you the workout if you want. Yeah, like, take it. Go ahead. You do, take do the workout yourself. and try to do it. Put it's it not going to feel the same. It's not going to be the same vibe. It's not going to be the same. Attract the same people and have the same energy. Yep. And and there's like a, a sauce that's a lot of credit to Evan. Not <laughs> not really that repeatable. And I think. Kind of tying back into what I was saying initially about just access to information and podcasts and things like that. I think we were born in such a unique time where we are products of all of these incredible people. And we've we've had the opportunity to be students of the greatest teachers of our time and and in past history, too, because we can read on on anybody really that you want to. But now there's all these uh, these giants of today and of like the of the recent past. And you can kind of, whereas Cam Haynes might have been this this fi fairy tale figure previously, you you can or Evan can now go and spend time with this guy and come back and have some new fire to bring and and a new invigoration and make some new network that's going to put us on the map somewhere else and things just bubble insanely. So I think that we were just in such a super like if there's ever been a good time to strike when the iron is hot the iron is like as hot as it's ever been in history right now it's gonna keep heating up for you to keep getting for you to keep learning and keep and keep getting help from peers that keep elevating themselves too and then you find yourself in the in the in the network with with like all, all the other best people kind of from today and i think your platform is cool because you you prop you propagate that basically like your service is is sharing everybody's knowledge and stories <laughs> I love it. And and the podcast medium for me is like just the, 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 the easiest way to consume. I can just listen. I, I don't have to read something. I can do it passively. I can you can tell me what the episode's roughly about or who the person is before I even tune into it. Like I'm like, this is set up. We need we need to be the best and the smartest and have the best workouts and know all of the best cool things to be adding in and and uh and our and our vision can be like boundless because now we have so many examples of people who have done really cool things in their own right 
And uh, even like two weeks ago, me and Evan went into the city, this, this cool place, the Live Method. They had a little like soft warming kind of type thing. But you just start to see, oh, this guy's doing a sick thing in the city and he's doing private training and there's 15 people training at once. Oh, we could do a little element like that if we get a little side thing. And like our, our vision has just continued to grow as the product has grown. And, and now we're just like, we can, we can do whatever we want, man. We are like... We're in the primest spot to do whatever we want as as young people that are like so living this life and true to it. And there's not there's not there's definitely not many people like Ev. There's not definitely not many people like Len. It's not many people like you either, so, man. Yeah, Come it's, on. It's like a good uh it's a good triangle of of force. We're gonna get into the triangle. We're gonna get into the triangle because I did want to touch on that because he had mentioned on the podcast with me that you guys went out to see him in LA and spoke yeah. to him out there, and that's kind of how things started to be. Yeah, bubbling a little a bit. Bubbling and, and forming and whatnot. But on the topic of everything that you just said, it's kind of crazy because there's so many things to help create ideas. Like, so you have an idea for something. There's so many tools to shape those yep. ideas and actually make them real. Yeah. And there's so many ways that we can just try out different things. I mean, the coolest part is like, we're not corporate kids, man. Yeah. Think yeah, about how cool big, that is. That's a big, that's a big point. Think about how there's, fucking there's cool no that limits. is. There's no we don't boundaries. go into the city at sorry T. Sorry, Tyler. I love you, bro. <laughs> we don't go into the city at 7 a.m., get home at six, seven o'clock at night, fucking drain from the day and this and that. We get to like go train and like sit around a little bit and yeah. form some ideas and train again. Yeah, like yeah. in your situation, you get to train a bunch yeah. of clients and do your thing and yeah. be in the environment that is conducive to building more Absolutely, things yeah. that are not the same, but different and different avenues. Like you said, doing the city, yeah. different types of split offs. I mean, the cryotherapy is really cool. The ice bath that you guys have, it's really cool. I wanted to talk to you about the, um, the experience out at the, at the UFC center, right? Mm -hmm. The breath work and uh -huh. whatnot. I really want to talk about that. I, I, I really want to dive into the transition from cryo to you know working with cryo this is, a, this is a good this is a good point right now actually for me to touch on real quick so because I, it just seems like things were aligned for for this to happen as it is so yeah. i have this whole cryo background experience right and ev is an orange theory manager or whatever he is at the point and i actually met len through a um through a movement gym like i shared a little post on it today it was on my story it was like this funky video of doing some movement practice like it was it was very it was very far out like almost like Eastern concepts of almost like Tai Chi elements to it and things like that but like partner games and things like that so a lot of this was a uh, Ido Ido Portal inspired who was f popular for training Conor McGregor when he was cool. kind of like maybe in his Aldo camp or something like that and he was like the touch butt in the park guy and he had Conor doing all these kind of weird things so one of my really good friends had linked up with another guy they opened this kind of gym that did these. This style of training, which was a little bit of gymnastic, a little bit of strength training, a little bit of abstract games and skill work and coordination and balance and literal was, hybrid training. Yeah, but like n n less of like the training training aspect of it. A lot of it wasn't hard. It was very much learning skills in a lot of ways and learning how to move your body in, in new ways and isolating things differently and. Anyway, it was it was like it was like a it was like a I don't know how to describe it other than like a weird practice. Like you you you'd go if you were doing something. Sometimes you'd be like, "This is like the weirdest. I don't even know what I'm doing." Right? I'm like crawling on the ground and like rolling around to music while somebody is doing something to cue me. Like I don't even know. Like, I'm there, loose right now. There was a lot of weird shit going on. I don't know what it is, but I'm loose. Yeah, like there was a lot of very valid things too. And and uh, it's a it's a really cool studio. If anyone wants to check them out, it's called Locomotion. Locomotion. Um, that's kind of like where me and Lenny met at first. So. Um, now we're just crawling on the ground together. You're like, yo, man. Yeah, yeah. And he would always just be like, you, you're, you, like, he would see me doing sauna and things like that. And I had the cryo place at the time. So he'd be like, I want to come, like, kick it with you in the sauna, you know? And I was, like, a little bit of a lone wolf at that point because I had just finished school and, and basically started a business where I was like, all my school friends were still, like, being young 20 something year olds. And, like, I would work on Saturday, Sunday morning. So I wasn't really going out. Friday night, so I kind of like lost a, a bit of a connection to them in a, in a in a lot of ways. It's a weird um, transformative time too. Yeah, which I was like cool with because I'm like yes. I'm taking on this new business endeavor. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a business mogul and an entrepreneur and this like young and and do it all. And it's nothing against them, obviously, and that no, type no. of lifestyle. It's just like it didn't match. It just up wasn't what I wanted to do. Yeah, it's a phase out. I period. was very over like partying and like. 
going out to the local bars and shit like that. I just like had had enough of it. I just yeah. wanted to streamline my 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 like career basically. Um, so I had the cold thing already going on and I had a couple spots. And so me and Lenny would kind of like kick it and hang out a bit. And then he would just kind of like mention that he had a friend, Evan, that that uh, that I would like that we would like connect with because Evan was very into fitness and he knew I was like very into fitness like that, too. Uh, and then uh, I don't I don't know. Me and Evan had hung out maybe through him like a few times. And I remember like the exact timelines of everything. But we had like lifted a few times. Like we would go to the gym, to, like the three of us together and just do like some CT Fletcher shit That's and like dope. just throw some weights around, whatever. And, uh, and then the Ev like privately had reached out to me at some point uh about opening an orange theory because he had a, a woman i think that wanted to fund him to do an orange theory and he was like had been doing it for long enough and he was big enough in it that he definitely knew the ins and the outs and could like i was very much so like he, he should have been doing his own thing a, a while before he even ended up doing it so he was like would you want to do some recovery shit on the side of it like you can put a probably put a cryo chamber in there and do the little sauna and whatever like we can do this on the side of the of the gym and I like I don't usually say no to things off the bat like I'll always take a step forward and be like yeah. well let's see like I'll feel let's it out some shit let's out, go see. all the way until the point where I need to make a solid decision to put some money in or something like that and then I can kind of back out if I need to at them but I'll pr- kind of like entertain the idea so then we would just like bullshit a little bit about like every this was like a little bit on and off like how much you think it would cost or like for me, at first, it was just I was just like a partner that was going to do recovery. So I'm like, just let me know, like, basically what size building you're going to use, what size I would have to work with. I knew the ins and the outs at that point. This is maybe like 2020. I've been doing my thing for like five years now, the cryo stuff. So I felt like very, very confident that I that I knew the ins and the outs of of like the, all these holistic things. Like there's nothing I haven't heard of. And, and you know. So and you're keeping um, up because of your background, you're keeping up with new studies. You're right, exactly. Yeah. And I like had this little science background from school. So I was very much into the science of all these new things, those modalities that were coming out into biohacking and like this, just the, the onset of a lot of these things that are like a lot more popular now. So I was like, this is great. Like I've, I've already worked my family for a while where we've been like grindy for a while. And I feel like I've, I've tried, I had, we had this, all these things. And then we had to like downsize after it was too much. So I'm like, this will be like my perfect like branching out where I can do what I know, but now I'll just do it on my own and I'll get to not be overworked and underpaid. I'll reap all the rewards of like everything here. So this, so I'll just entertain this idea and we'll just see kind of where it goes. And I guess somewhere along the line, it just turned into like, I don't know, maybe the lady pulled out or something like that. So it was like, do you think we could do this on our own? And and I I was super into fitness. I never had coached anybody or my dad was a personal trainer. So I'd like covered his private sometimes but I've never like offered my services as a as a as a fitness professional or something like that like I was just a guy that went to the gym that was like as far as it went and I tr- and I tried to understand more what I was doing but I wasn't like in a co- in a coaching sense I didn't have any structure of taking on a client or something like that like that was that was not where I was at at that time I was just a guy that knew a lot about like health basically for the most part so what's interesting about that I don't mean to cut in but what's interesting about that is that you and I, just with our years of training, years of being around people, years of keeping up with studies and stuff like that, probably are better off than 90% of the trainers that call themselves oh, trainers, for, in for a sure. lot, which yeah, is yeah. insane because Absolutely. I wouldn't think of myself in, in your position too. If I was put in your shoes in that moment, I wouldn't think of myself as a trainer either, but it's like, wait a minute, I, I do know a lot of shit. Right, right. It's, like, and it's so, weird when you start reflecting on that. I, I wasn't even really getting asked to train anybody. I was just like, I was just like, it kind of got to the point where I was just going to maybe like help fund this or something like that and maybe still do this recovery shit on the side and like just like help. I don't know. Like basically we were just kind of like friends at that point. I was like, this could be cool. Like let's start a podcast the, yeah. together. Like <laughs> let's start a gym together, you know? Figuring the roles out. Yeah, and I remember him being like, uh, it'll, it probably won't cost that much. Like maybe like five, <laughs> ten grand. We could just get like a couple barbells and like we'll find a little space. It'll be like a thousand a month. Like and I'm like I don't know. It seems like that's like a low ball number, but I have like a little bit of savings. I have like ten grand or something in savings. Like I'll, I'll like let's just kind of keep playing it out. And I think he and I are are not super uh, like. <laughs> To go through all the steps of finding a spot and signing paperwork and all that shit, like, that's not where he and I are. That's not really our forte, more or less. I think we're, like, we just like to do what we do and, and try to do that stuff well. And then, but then like, you have a third partner and that then, so, yeah, steps so, in. <laughs> so we would just kick it kind of, like, in my backyard. So kind of this is when COVID happened, basically. So cryo has to shut down. Gyms have to shut down. My business has to shut down. But I still have the business, so I still have the spot. 
So I have the key. I can still go into it. So we would like legit meet up every day and we would like go in the sauna for like an hour and then like, I don't know, go for a run or like something. But we would just kind of meet up like every day because there was like nothing to do at all. So we would like maybe ride our bikes or whatever and meet up at the spot and sit in the sauna and we'd kick it for a while. Uh, and then go about our separate days, and it'd be like, all right, see you guys tomorrow, like yeah. type of thing, you know? And like, you knew because you knew you had nothing to do tomorrow. It was kind of cool in retrospect. So it was interesting, yeah. And yeah. it was such a break in the pattern at that point where I had a business that ended, and then Ev was kind of out of work, and Lenny wasn't working with the Yankees as an accountant, and they obviously, like, everything stopped pretty much. So we all had this nice break in the pattern, and we would just shoot the shit about kind of anything, but it started kind of bubbling a little bit, this idea of, like, Evan having a gym that I might help with. And it wasn't really anything yet. So I, I I don't remember exactly how it went down, but I remember Lenny being like, I gotta get fucking get in on this. Like, you guys are doing a gym? Like, what? Like, let me let me fucking in. So we were like, we don't have anything yet. So sure, like you you could be on board with it, you know? And I think uh he was much better at like really being assertive with taking the reins as far as making it real. Because I just like I said, I'll just keep saying, yeah. To the next step. If you're doing the like the legwork, then like, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, it sounds good. Sounds good. Sounds good. But then it really like got to the point where it was like, I found a spot. Like, we can really do this shit. And I was like, I, I didn't even look at it. And Evan didn't even look at it either. We were like, all Lenny, right. Like, Lenny found it, right? <laughs> Lenny found it. Yeah. yeah. We were like, sounds good. Like, I remember he had like a PowerPoint in his basement, like of a, of a couple like perspective locations. And we we're like, obviously, they're just like photos on the on the street view and shit like that. And I am still, like, this guy that's, like, not really going to be a trainer, but not quite, like, I don't really have any role, more or less. So I'm like, yeah, it all sounds good, whatever. Like, I'll just, I have I have 10 grand to just, like, throw into this shit and, I'll, and like, see kind of where it goes. So it, got, it just got very real, like, one kind of step at a time until we got this auto body garage and signed a lease on it. We were actually, me and Lenny were in California. Ev was in California. We were all in California when we even, like, we're going over the lease and we had no idea what we were doing, but me, I remember me and Lenny like reading it in a, in a backyard somewhere. Like, what do you think about this, this, uh, thing about the air conditioning? Should we like fight back on that? Or like, what's, what's typical? Like, I don't know. And, uh, um, weird when you get thrown right into the fire, like, yeah. Know? And so you just realize like, there's so many obstacles to like really becoming established and established not even successful right yeah like even just opening your doors there's just like so many things that you need to pay for or hire someone for or just do a lot of legwork for and it was like now now i see why people can't do it especially on their own because just like even if you have good resilience you just get so many obstacles that eventually you're like i don't know if i can do this one or like you you have to take some leaps sometimes that you're not sure if you can do and especially if you don't have support system, then I remember all the time leading up to like, are we going to do this thing or not? It being like maybe one day where I'm like, guys, I don't know. Like it's COVID times. Like it's a lot of money for us to open the gym right now. Do you think maybe we should wait? Should we like try doing this instead? Whatever. And then another day where I'd be like so on board, but someone else would be like, I don't know. Like this is scary. I'm having second thoughts on it. So we kind of just all kept each other on the wagon and – just everyone kind of taking, I guess, a little piece of contributing to the vision and feeding in and keeping the ball rolling. And then so it just I got, got very real, I guess, at some point. The and, cyclical emotions are crazy. Yeah. And then it just exponentially kind of went until we've had a like a physical location. We had this garage. And um, I'm still just totally trusting Evan at this point. Like he's like I have clients that used to come to Orange Theory for me. They would they'll, they'll come and they'll follow me. And I'm like, all right, like, you know, like you're you're the guy so i'll just i'll I'll do whatever you need me to do but i'm not really qualified to do anything right now so um yeah and then and what was let me ask you this what was it like rolling up to the garage the first time you know i I'm, i'm i'm never like the type to like make something grand or, or I just always downplay everything. I don't know okay. why. No, I just, just downplay just everything. Give me, like, give me, give me the real raw emotion. What was it like? Downplay everything. Where I'm like, all right, it's not real yet until this, or it's not, it's nothing yet until, all right, we're open, but so what? Anyone can sign a building and open doors and buy shit, but it's nothing until we get to here, and then we got to there, and I'm like, all right, well, it's not, it's nothing. It's not, it's not worth being super excited about. You don't count. You want to count your eggs until they hatch. And my previous experience with business was very much like kind of like check to check as far as like business expenses and like 
I never got to the point where I was like, oh, things are so good and, mm-hmm. and everybody's just rolling in and we're so busy and it's it's so easy to make payments to everybody and to pay the rent and to do the ads and like everything's just just fine. Like every week I'm like, oh shit, like two weeks there's payroll and like t- how many customers did we get today? And like kind of like pinching the bottom line. So it was like so stressful being an owner like that, that it made me try to just like not even think about shit like that. So then we had this kind of business. I was just like, I don't even want to think about shit like that. I just want to like do the best things that I can do where I'm axed and, and help in the right ways. But as far as like the the gym itself, like visceral feeling, like none, honestly. I was like, all right, this is a place and we have it. And now we have to like fill it and do good stuff with it. And I'm pretty much just going to rely on this guy to to do those things. Like Evan's the the, the guy that he knows how to how to run. How, I don't know how to structure it, how to what to tell these people to do, how to be on a microphone. Like there's so many things that I'm like a, just a shy person that knows a bit about fitness and has a little bit of money. And I'm like, I'm just like happy to be here. I don't, I don't know. Like I'm, I, this is all in your hands and I'll, I'll fully support whatever, but I was like, we're just doing this. I don't know. I don't feel anything yet. I, I'm not, ex- I'm not, I'm excited about what it could be, but like, I don't, I won't get too excited about it. This could end up being like not a good investment. Someday. That's what that, so that's probably what you were it, feeling like as well. Almost, you were feeling yeah. almost like, you know, this could fall out from underneath us and I just have to a, stay, a little I have bit, to stay yeah. neutral. Even I, I think even at some point after we had even opened and we had been doing well for a little while, I think me and Evan and Lenny went away and we were just kind of talking about like future visions and things like that. And I didn't have like a super part in it yet. So I wasn't like so attached to the people and what it can do and how it's changing people. And I wasn't like super, I was involved, but I, I, I just went when I felt like going almost like I didn't really have an obligation to be there. I would just kind of like go sit at the desk and say hey to people and peek in on the classes and, and just try to help where I can help. But I wasn't very invested in like, this is my thing that I'm going to be doing you for a doing while. You weren't doing your daily and, schedules yet. Yeah. So like th- as far as talking about where we see it going, I'm like, I don't know. I could, I'm still trying to find what I want to do with my life and how I can like make some money. But I'm like, but you have, you're, you're like, th- you should just get paid really well to do what you're doing now. Cause you do it really well. Like you're good. You're good with the people. And you're, you're like the guy on the inside. Some like the village needs, you know, like the, the leader to keep things in order. And that doesn't feel like my role. I'm not really like so in with people that way. I'm, I'm much more like lower key mysterious on the outside, like having my own little things going. Like, and, and so over time, I just kind of started on taking on a little bit more role of it. And then as that grew, I obviously started being more involved with the community. And then really when I started coaching, it was just a, it was just to help Ev out because he just had a full workload. Like every class was his class, which he had also come from a really heavy workload previous. So I think he he always did what he needed to do previous that shaped him to be ready to like take on something crazy like that. And he just has, I think, in- insane ethic to be able to like keep keep uh, keep hammering forward, like in any conditions, and, and no matter how he feels, type of thing. Um, so, I, yeah, I just I, I started coaching to help him out a little bit, and I probably took like a Friday night class or something like that, office hands at first, and like nobody would go. I'd have like <laughs> legit like two people, like four people in a class, and like. I, I didn't have coaching background, so I'm sure I wasn't really the most exciting person to even fucking take a class with anyway. But I just knew fitness. That's all I knew. I didn't know how to make people enjoy a workout and a, and a, to MC a room and things like that. But I just started taking on a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And then, it got, I don't know, somewhere along the line, it got to the point where, like, this is, like, my identity. This is – I'm, like, a coach here. And these are my students and my people. And this is, like, my whole community and it's just continued to to scale a little bit larger and a little bit larger and a little bit larger since then. So I'm still trying to also like mend my own lane as a coach and as like a as an athlete and a competitor and um my own my own person as well, but I I for sure like am very proud of the of the third ownership in 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 the brand. Well, I think I, I dude, I you're you're doing an awesome job. Like for real, man. Like no no bullshit. I only know you from the, you know, the third quarter, let's call yeah, it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For like, uh-huh. the, I only know you from this spot. I don't know you from the beginning, but it takes time to get your feet wet and and involved and developed, especially when it's a new venture. Yeah, it takes time. You know, this is what Evan did for a long time. He did mm. this for a long time at at uh, Orange Theory. So it's just a matter of 
now having the free reign to literally do whatever he wants, and he knows the formula that works. Yeah. So you are trial by fire again. Yeah. Not only as a business owner when you started with the cryo stuff, but and then obviously doing the OG stuff, you're another trial by fire, yeah. actually owning your own ship and starting it from ground up, mm -hmm. but now coaching. And it's cool to see that you have your own, like the uh, the open, the strike, the strong open, where you yeah, get to yeah. like walk around and coach and do yep. your thing. And then you have your own classes. So now I know I know Evan, you know, creates the programming as well. And you definitely have your say in things uh, about creating the workouts and whatnot. And you all come together to create the spreads and the splits and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So as you've grown into this position and role, how do you feel like your background has assisted in creating some of these workouts where Evan has his background, you have your background, you guys come together and say, well, this is what I want to have in this class, but like maybe we can tweak it to go over here. I know he had mentioned this morning at the class, the uh, hip, what is it? The hip bridge yeah. curls. Like that was something that you're starting to do yeah. in, in one of your it's classes. It's just like, I, I, I realized actually in that, in that like, college, uh, whatever it was, a study where I got to participate in and I had got to do some work with Ben Bikulski, who was like a big yeah, bodybuilder. Ben Pat. Yeah. So he would always be in the lab and shit like that. I would just, I didn't, I'd never get to really like train. I think he had like spotted me like one time or something. I thought it was like the coolest thing. But so I, I, after that, like finished the program was kind of back on my own a little bit for training. And like, I knew some things now, but it was still, I still don't have structure to like how to put together training plans and things like that. So just for, he was like in proximity to me. So I'm like, I'm going to buy Ben Pikulski shit. And I learned just like a lot through buying his stuff. Super smart. Yeah. Just, he was very much a sciencey guy and he liked to have a lot of reason behind why he was choosing what he did. And I really liked that versus my previous philosophy was like, just basically do everything and you'll, you'll luck out on, if you just do everything, then you can't miss. So if you just do everything, then the things that will work will be there. And some of it might be a waste, but like you, it, it'll, you'll, you'll get it done. Cause you're going to be doing everything versus him. Sometimes he'd be like, there's no point of doing that because you already did that with this thing. So I'm like, I really like that rational, logical structure. There's a how and a why, and there's a way to do it the right way and, and not so right. Or at least for him, this is why I like to do it this way. There's like rationale behind it. From there, I kind of just like, realized that paying for people's information was something that was helpful to me. So I started buying a lot of programs and, and working with a lot of different coaches and doing like seminars and, and certifications and uh, in-person meets and things like that with all these people. So I feel like I got to learn so many different schools of thought. And I spent some time at the Edo Portal School doing movement. And then I spent some time doing jujitsu and then I spent some time like bouldering and then I got into running and then I got into like bodybuilding, but then I tried to be a power lifter, but then I tried to do some hybrid athletic stuff. And then I hired this coach cause I saw that he, he did this cool feat of strength or something like that. And this guy had great mobility. So I brought his mobility program and I think I, I got to learn a lot through all these guys. And so now I think I just have a really, really, uh, very broad understanding of like, there's lots of different disciplines and there's lots of different ways that you can train and other ways that I would have said are weird or non-useful. Now I just understand that these are just different schools of thought. And so I think I had a lot of influences and Ev had a lot of his own influences. And then we have a really cool common ground where we see eye to eye on like so many things. And we have a lot of guys that we just feel like are mutually like on our Mount Rushmore's kind of of people that we like look up to, but a lot of different people in that sense as well. And like the information and the knowledge and the people that he kind of clicks with well were maybe people that I never knew about. And then I kind of feed him some stuff that I knew that he didn't really know about. So I think we just have a nice little medley now of there's no rules. There's no, it's even hard to explain. Like even, um, Somebody was asking me this earlier. If you saw that video that the guy Charles uh, put out about like best gym on Long Island, and he and he said OG Training Academy, oh shit, but he was, like, I didn't see it. Explaining why or explaining what the class was like, and someone was like, I didn't like his description, and I'm like, well, there's not really a good description for it because it didn't really exist as something previously, and we kind of just made this stuff out of thin air. So there's no limits or bounds to what discipline of training you might see in that class. So if someone called it a boot camp, they 
I might have had a class experience that felt like boot camp or if someone said there's lots of calisthenics or they do lots of plyometrics or it's very heavy on conditioning or I, I only did bodybuilding when I went there or this is a funky movement that came from this guy that practices this way. There's like no limit or bound to what can what can be in there. There's no structure that's set. There's no there's nothing that's off limits. There's nothing that we have to do. It's kind of it kind of evolves with our training. And when I get really fired up about something and I kind of talked on this before, it's really nice to have things received really well. So when I'm like, Ev, here's a cool hip bridge preacher that my current coach had me do. It's just like, there's nothing like magical about this variety, but this is a cool variety. We could we could throw this in class and then it and then it ends up in class. So class is a melting pot of every every great bodybuilder, athlete, coach, scientist. We, we, we live, we live the life that we're involved with. And I'm, I'm very much peers with a lot of, a lot of people. And it's funny because we were talking about the comparison thing before. And I was, I was just talking about this with somebody earlier where I'm like, I don't have these numbers yet that I want to have that this guy has. And they're like, well, this guy just, he just gets paid to do this. Basically, this is all he does. And I'm like, but me too now, like, this is also all I do now. So yeah. I'm not like putting myself down, but same, I'm like, same, but different. I get all day to like live this stuff and learn this stuff and practice this stuff and trial this stuff and trial it on myself and trial it with other people. So I I have I have like duty and obligation now to like stay up on what everybody's doing and keep up with. I was just look to who's actually doing it instead of who's just talking about it because I think obviously when people are doing it there's there's something about what they're doing that's working well. And especially if they're not really selling me on philosophy, they're just showing me what they do and their performances at a high level. Like the coach that I'm working with now, I'm like, I want to learn from you. I want to figure out what you do. Um, so yeah, I think we're, I think we're in a, we're in a good, both of us are in a, in a crazy crossroads of what, where our past, the things that we learned from our past and aligning us to be like where we're at now and obviously that we can have still like a shared vision and we're still definitely all three of us on the same page with like where we want to take this and where we want it to grow and I think like that's probably not super common in two plus years of like small business that everything's been good enough that the parties are like let's keep let's keep doing this together we're having a good time the formula's you know? working yeah yeah things things are working we can we we keep growing it whereas like other other places get locked into what they do and like that it might not always be cool to train like the certain way like everything has ups and like comes and goes the crossfit had its wave and like there's there's been popular times where styles of training were 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 the in thing and then now they're like oh nobody's doing that shit anymore like that's 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 old school now but we can keep up on whatever we can reintroduce whatever so it's um it's very it's very like liberating to have a to have a tangible physical location that ha that offers something to people that I think is a is a true product of our 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 like passions and our and our life's worth of knowledge and our time that we've spent like going and and Eb going to see Cam this week is a testament to that like we're still like Who's this guy? Who's that guy? I need to go hang out with him. I need to go get that experience of learning from him and and or, and trying his stuff and trying to do this alongside of him. And and these are who we want to to be our peers. So I think um I think everything is just it's like been it's like manifest manifest destiny fate you know the stars feeling stars type aligning of thing. around yeah, the people that the you're, stars you're, aligning. you're you're aspiring to be like. For years, I was a fan of John Meadows. Like, yeah, yeah. Huge, huge fan. fan of John Meadows. Huge fan of John Meadows. Like, we're talking, when I was bodybuilding, I'd just watch his videos with Antoine Viant and them training their fucking asses off at Elite yeah. FTS and Dave Tate and all these guys. And I would, <laughs> yeah. I'd watch them, I'd watch them. And then all of a sudden, John and I are friends and we're texting each other. Oh, and then insane. when he passed, it was like, oh, dude. Like, that was a friend of mine. We, sad, we spoke man. on the phone a week before. So I was supposed to go to the Olympia with him. Jeez. So it was just like... yeah. You know, you go to these people and these training styles and whatnot. I'm, I'm actually curious, what training styles have you found that you've aligned with the most over, like that have stood the test of time with you at least? Because obviously things phase in, phase out, but there are certain cores that you probably have always enjoyed doing that you found not only oh, the yeah. results, but when you incorporate them into class. I mean, Ev says Meadow Row, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. I like get a tear. I'm like, oh, I'm wearing yeah. his jersey. Uh, no, this uh -huh. isn't the one, but I'm like, I'm wearing his jersey today. Let's go.
Yeah, I think uh, I actually think that's such a loaded question. I probably would have answered it differently had you asked me uh, some time back in my life. But I think um, I'm I think this probably frustrates a lot of people, but I think everything's just so context dependent. And <laughs> when you say like what works the best or something like that or what's for what's, you, what's a great thing? I'm like, it depends what you what, what do you want to achieve? I think there are some there are some probably tried and true principles to building muscle. And if you ask me about that specifically, I would say you got to go close to fail. You got to use you got to use good technique, good range of motion, probably probably hit some lengthen positions in, in some movements or just tra- train the right movements the right way. Um, but but more or less underlying would be like make sure you I, I subscribe to the theory of stimulating reps where you can only get a few of them per each set. And they're going to come as the few that come right before fail when the when the weights basically start to slow down you start to accumulate enough tension that you can you can spark muscle growth but that's not the way to train for everybody and like not everybody strictly wants hypertrophy so if you're gonna say I want to be a, I want to be a great athlete I, I don't know that's probably not the way that I, I wouldn't probably tell you to body bodybuild and just take things to fail I think that would get you somewhere and like there's a lot of ways probably to get to the same place but um, I, I a little bit stopped looking at training so rigidly. I think we're just we're just moving stuff around, and we're just we're we're like we're doing exercises, but we're just moving our bodies around in like so, some ways that feel very normal. But these are just agreed upon things because people have done them for a little while. The squat, bench, and deadlift just got agreed upon as some lifts that are standard now. I'll hit so your you can, main, yeah, you know, like functional. Workout. You can get numbers from them based yeah. on the standardized barbell that we made with the plates that we made, and you can kind of compare numbers across. And these are like the three lifts, but there's not really any reason that you have to press the be- the bar flat when you're laying on a bench. That's just what we decided on, or or lift it off the ground, and we call it de- that's what we call a deadlift. Or I, I just think these are these are some patterns that we we use, but fitness can get so abstract and so um there's so many schools of 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 movement now and and schools of fitness and a lot of these non-conventional ones now quote unquote but even like landmine you and tom does a lot of this stuff with with uh kettlebells and and sandbags and these these are like non-conventional non-traditional but they're not they're just other mediums they're just other weights and they're shaped and held differently and we kind of like perform different things with them but a lot of people get really pissed if you're in the gym and you're like using things the wrong way almost that unconventionally yeah, yeah like and and I just I think I'm I'm almost beyond it now where I'm like there could be some some use to that like I don't know I was very sucked into rigid science based hypertrophy building and picking perfect angles and things like that at 1.2 and now I'm more like some of that's important but some of it's like doesn't matter as much so, sometimes the the underlying thing that will make any training work is just effort if you just train hard at anything, you'll you'll make more progress than the guy that had that perfect plan that he paid the perfect guy for, you know. So I, if you if you if you ask me what is the best fitness or what's what's something that's really stuck, I have like too many of them to even count. I I generally feel like I'm like jack of all trades with 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 a lot of things, and I think my personality is to just try to learn enough that I feel like I could sit at a table and talk about them, and then maybe to get into the highest level of mastery I'm not always like super I don't care sometimes that much about because I think the trade-off is like a lot of time to get to that level where you just understand the ins and outs and a lot of times I'm okay with like I understand kind of why that works I don't need to really know much more beyond this like there's five good reps in a set regardless of like what's going on in the fibers and why this is kind of happening it's nice to know but I'll let like other experts kind of boil those things down for me and I'll and I'll just take them as they are but uh, I'll just end up rambling for a long time because I'm like, I, I don't know. It depends. Like I've, I've had a lot of different eras of training where when I was in these things, I was like, these are this is like the thing to be doing. And even jujitsu, like when I got in, I was like, this is the thing to be doing. Like my time in the gym was so pointless because I'm there's like 14 year olds that weigh half of what I weigh and they're like choking me now. So I spent all this time doing bench press. All oh, guys are so dumb that I go to the gym and bench press now. Meanwhile, I just spent like years in the gym bench pressing, but now I'm like, oh, I could never be one of these guys. Like, <laughs> jits is fucking the thing that I can't believe that these betas aren't training this way. Like, you know, and then I would like find some other art and be like, oh, this is the thing that's gonna that's gonna make my fitness like the best. And 
so I had like a stint with calisthenics and and again bodybuilding and powerlifting and and non conventional trainings and so I I think that's what makes me a, a, a better coach now. What well, makes you well rounded because when, you know when, a lot about a when lot when there's of a client topics. coming. I'm like, what do you what are you kind of here for? Because like I think I have good tools and and maybe it's not me, but I think I have good peers that I can kind of point you in the right direction to. And I think I understand enough that. If you're explaining to me where you want to be, I can I can point you towards which disciplines I have past experience with that can probably take you close to there and some teachers that you can learn from. And I think everyone is more or less like regurgitating other people's stuff, but you maybe form your own system because you ha- ha- get some structure to like, I like this, this is how I train and I learned this from John Meadows and this is how I would get better at this thing that I learned from this guy. They have like a repertoire and an arsenal kind of now versus being like, oh yeah, I just bodybuild, so I know how to train for bodybuilding. Like, I think everything else has made me a lot, a lot more well-rounded and understanding of like, not everybody even wants to bodybuild. Some people think that's boring to just like train for hypertrophying the muscle, you know? So it is. And it and, right, it's, like, and it's very one in a lot of scenarios, it's very one case use for yeah ab- like, ab- absolutely all right so it looks pretty but what right. are you, what can you do with it which is fine i won't talk down on it because I, I actually think it's really fun to like pump reps out and kind of train less seriously sometimes like i'm just i'm just training a i'm just training chest today i'm just gonna train and like throw my chest like i want to get a bigger bench press sure i want to look better sure but like and sometimes more more serious training where i I need this to help me become a better jujitsu athlete. I need this endurance practice to get my cardio up so that I can last rounds longer. And it's crazy. Like, that's a different kind of training than just bodybuilding type of thing. So a lot of times I see jujitsu guys bodybuilding. I'm like, you're kind of wasting your time doing four sets of 30 arm curls. Like there's other disciplines that are going to help you and they're going to give you way more bang for your buck time wise. And this happens with kids a lot of times where the parents are like, let me get him in the gym like five days a week. And I'm like, Get that kid in jujitsu more and have him do more technique work and then let's use strength as like a little bit on the outside. And I think the fact that I don't really care as much about selling it, I'm more just like, here's what I can do. Here's my physique. Here's my numbers. Here's the way that I like to train. Here's who I learned it from. Here's the structure. Here's how you follow it. If you enjoy it, then like, here's what it is. And if you don't, then I don't, that's okay. So yeah, Fit, there's fitness for everybody. And there's other group fitness for other people too. Sometimes people are like, did you hear this guy went to that gym? And I'm like, there's enough fitness to go around for everybody, dude. And not everybody needs what we offer and what we have. And I actually think we're, we're a pretty high level place now. Whereas in the beginning, I would have said like, come one, come all beginners. This is, this is great for you. We'll cater to you. And now I'm like, if you never trained with a barbell or dumbbell, this is this is like pretty high level training to be doing where you should probably have like an onboarding on your own or with a trainer or follow a program or something like that. Get yourself acquainted. And like, this isn't for, this isn't for everybody. It's for anybody. It's but okay it's that it's not for everybody. It's, and not, it's, it's okay. It's we don't okay. have to force it to make it fit. And that's how I feel about my training as well. My coaching as well. It's like, we don't have to force this to make it fit. If you're like, Hey, I want to be the best Olympic weightlifter. I would be like, I'm not super competent with Olympic weightlifting. Like I, I can like bro my way through it and I follow like a lot of training that sprinkles it in there. And I think it's like important to basically move the bar fast sometimes and do different tasks. But like I'm not going to be the guy to, to hire for that. So I'm like very much happy to just point you in a direction this of how you can go coaching that. reach your goal. Yeah, exactly. And um, so like we were saying before, there's abundance, you know, everywhere. And there's always going to be people that want to learn. And there's always going to be people that need like some the level that that you're at instead of like the highest level and it's just another reason to freaking just do it like we were saying instead of uh uh comparing and squandering like ah oh, my coaching isn't good enough because that's where i would have been previously if i didn't have this like vehicle to kind of start almost being pressured to start like offering some of my my teachings into like i don't know that i ever would have taken it upon myself to be a coach if people would have asked me, I would have said, sure. But now I'm comfortable at the point where I'm like, I have programming. If you want, if you need help in the gym, like you can hire me if you want to come with me privately or I'll coach you online. Or I have these programs that run daily. If you want to kind of train with me daily and do my style of training that way. 
Um, so that's what I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you, how do you think your evolution from your first class to what you're doing now, it's been pretty pivotal. It's been, yeah, it's for been, sure. I, it's, can't, I, don't even rem- I don't even remember back then, honestly. Crazy, right? It's <laughs> yeah. only two years. Yeah, yeah. It's like It's and, not that long, but it's long enough, but it's yeah, not that it, long. It just goes to show. And even some of the things I was putting on my story say was like five years ago or so. Yeah. Uh, and everyone's like, you're like a, you're, you are like a small child. Like you're like a baby, you know, like how, how old are you? And I'm like, I'm like 25 almost, you know, <laughs> like I was like still like a man, but like, goddamn, like in a, in a fairly, uh, like little, little window, like I definitely have like stepped into the next part of my life. And I, and it seems like a part that will be around for a while and like foster a lot of other, a lot of other things too. No, I think it's great because you, you you have your own following. You have your own people that come to your class. And I think that like, so when I, I mostly go with the 6 a.m. spot. So every now and then, I think I've only taken three of your classes. Mm. But like when I can, I want to. I, I, I dig your music. I dig you. So I'm like, yeah, it's fucking dope. I love Eric. I love Evan. I really love everybody. I yeah. got I got, I got no, no gripes with anybody that coaches there. But like I go to your classes. I look around I'm like, who the fuck are these people? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. who, who are these people? I'm like, I don't even know anybody here. It's yeah. crazy because like I know Eric and I know Eric, Kim, because she's early in the morning, Lauren, which I know she's stepping yeah. away for a little while, uh-huh. and Evan. I know their classes, but then I go to yours and I'm like, I don't yeah. fucking know anybody. I'm like, all right, whatever. I, I go to that place and I'm like, I don't know anybody. <laughs> like, you know, I'm not, I I I coach a decent amount, but we we have uh <laughs> We only have one spot. There's only so many hours. So I don't have a mega heavy coaching schedule as far as that. I'm usually in the afternoons, in the PMs, honestly. And like a lot of times only 6.30 or 6 p.m. at night. And maybe sometimes like an afternoon or so. But like if you go to the morning, I might I might never see you ever. Like I might never see you ever. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. And then so it's it's funny because I'll I'll anywhere I go out now, there's always somebody or they're or they're one person away from, oh, my friend goes there, or I used to go there, or I've been there, or like there's some there's been people that I this is like a funny little side thing, but when I, when I was you know the High Rocks thing that I did? Yeah. Right. So that I was gonna a, ask you about High Rocks getting into that. Yeah, we'll talk about that too. Yeah. Uh there's like an event where you gotta do some lunging. And so it's just like this little, this little like I don't know, six foot wide or something lane that you get to lunge with. There's like two guys lunging and you get those Bulgarian bags. Mm-hmm. There's really like not much room like between them. So I kind of just like I'm like lunging really fast and just like barrel through them a little bit. And then at the end of the race, the guy's like, he like came up and found me and was like, hey, man, you didn't have to do that type of thing. And I was like, ah, oh, sorry. Like I didn't mean to. And then turns out like he goes to the gym. He goes to OG. And, like, oh, that's dope. This is like a competition in the city. And like I had never met this guy before, but he's like, oh, yeah, I go there. And I'm like. Fuck, like, what a oh, small world. My bad so, for hitting you with the elbows. Yeah, like, I'm like, all right, like, my bad about that. But I can't I can't go anywhere now without, like, and I think it's so cool because I, I was I was not really social like that previously. I had a lot of friends, but I'm not, like, a butterfly in that sense. I don't really like going out like that, you know. I was always, like, more, like, I had businesses and things like that. So I was kind of, like, I'd rather just stay in, really. You had, to, you had to grow up quick. More homebody. But, yeah, that's just, like, my personality, honestly. I'm like... Just lower key. Even if I'm out, I'd rather just like sit in the corner kind of with a couple people that I'm closer with and just shoot the shit or, you know, like that's more me than meeting new friends at a like in a social setting like that. 50-50. You know? I'm like halfway between. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like that. Yeah, no, like that's yeah. like a skill that I'm that I'm envious of almost that you could go out and 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 like socialize with somebody that you never met before type Year, of thing. I'll tell you what, years of sales, man. Years but of yeah, sales. Yeah, I never had any sales experience, yeah, honestly. I never had I never really had any work experience to be honest. I I uh I did roofing in between summers of college and then I got my first job like the day after college, which was a family business that right, I right in. worked from I graduated in 2015 and I worked from 2015 up until COVID 2020 and a little bit after too when we had like reopened and when whenever that was that Helped thing to started reestablish everything opening again. back again. Yeah. But um but yeah, that's why I started kind of like thinking elsewhere at, at that point at least. But yeah, that, that was my that was my history previously. Crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. A lot, a lot in a little bit of time, man. Yeah, it's 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 a very weird and interesting thing when you start to look back at time and you see how much happens in a year. Yeah. But then you look at a decade and it's like, holy shit, dude! Yeah. The amount of like personal business relationships, just everything. It's like the things that weave in and out, the the experiences that make you who you are today. I yeah. know we kind of touched on that right when we started. It's like you know, your personality shifts over time and your 
as you've been doing the coaching, I'm sure you've come out of your shell a lot Absolutely, more yeah. so than, you know, when you were just doing cryo and yeah. had the blinders on to just do that business. It's, it's pretty, it's a pretty interesting thing to see how we uh, develop and adapt over, over the time. Yeah. Uh, I w- actually wanted to touch on the UFC center because I, yeah. I didn't really talk to Evan about that. And I really wanted to find out what that was like. How'd you guys get involved with that? Like, what was the process of going? And then obviously, what did you learn? So Lenny and I were into that weirder shit previously, like the movement and things like that. And I think like a little uh, part of something that ties into that little community is like breath work. So I was bigger into Wim Hof previously, doing Wim Hof breath, breath work. I went to Wim, Wim Hof seminar and met him. Oh, that's sick. And did breath work with him. And I was very much into breath work for a little bit. And we got into the ice for a little while. Like I had the ice bath actually in my backyard. So during all this time, like Lenny would come over him and I would use the ice like every morning. And um, so we were very much into ice too. So I think the UFC thing came up kind of like randomly as Lenny, like, do you want to go try? Do you want to go learn this thing at the UFC Performance Institute? It's about breath work. And the company that was doing it was... I feel bad. I can't even remember the name right now. But Brian McKenzie is like the big guy. And I had already been familiar with his stuff. And I'm like, I'm always like, oh, like I can pay. I'm down to pay for people to teach me things. And if I think like that they have a cool system and structure to it, then I'm definitely down to go learn and like add this to my arsenal, you know. So the UFC thing was a little private, like, I don't know, 10 or 20 person uh, little hosted seminar, basically, with these guys that taught you performance breath work um to boil it down there's something interesting that happens when you accumulate a lot of co2 which is that you can carry more oxygen so their whole their whole uh framework of training is put yourself do training that you basically like almost like suffocate yourself with so like exhale hold blow everything out don't inhale again and then do like sets of push-ups or squats or carry kettlebells and things like that. And you'll start to feel that feeling of, oh my God, I got to breathe. Like I'm, I'm like that lightheadedness. Yes. Yeah. And that comes from CO2 rising. So if you can build tolerance to the CO2 rising, then you can have better cardio conditioning because you can, when it starts to rise naturally due to you doing more in the, in jujitsu or running or whatever it is, you can start to be tolerant of the higher CO2 and you won't have to necessarily start to breathe heavier and faster and you won't have that out of breath feeling. So that's like the gist of their training, which I've had actually a couple other teachers now that have kind of like used like same methodologies and uh, more specifically for like performance for runners, for, for athletes to train their tolerance of co2 in order to be able to be more oxygenated and then to be able to perform better That's basically yeah. yeah and then so what how, what they did uh, demonstrate with you guys so they yeah they, guys they had some protocols and things like that of how they would test where where to work on what what speed on the bike would kick off this response or uh little little protocols of all right do do exhale hold followed by this kettlebell exercise and do three rounds of this and that's your CO2 training kind of like for, for that day. So kind of like in a coach's standpoint of how might you integrate this? And they were like the, the, the official partner maybe of the UFC or something like that, of the Performance Institute. So they were starting to be able to do some cool science with their athletes. So kind of tying in like science and performance and things that was like really piqued my interest. Like, oh, breath can be an edge to uh, making these guys be able to last longer in fights or like pr- improving performance, cardio conditioning, like in general, basically. Um, so just another example of a, a fitness like tool being added to the arsenal because I wanted to go learn from from somebody else that that seemed like they were getting good results on there. And what own. was your experience with it? Did you you felt it? And obviously, are you um, incorporating it into your training still today? Are yeah, you... I'm actually re-sparked on it by the guy that eats just the fruit and eats the algae. Is oh, also shit. very big into breath work and into these exhale hold practices and things like that so he re-sparked me on it a little bit recently and now i'm much more into cardio conditioning through high rocks and through um race racing like running running racing and trying to build endurance basically so you bike too right correct so the coach that i'm working with now um his name's alec Belenis. he's like the, the murph world record holder actually wow um so uh he has me do usually two days a week that'll be zone two so i'll ride the bike for like an hour ride the assault bike for like an hour 
And so now the car- the assault bike for the whole hour. Yeah, like easy, easy, easy. Nah, but it's still tough. Yeah, that, that's a d- tough different. Yeah, but so now more of this stuff is easy based on like what your heart is doing more so than like because I I would probably be be of that mindset before I didn't do really any cardio. So I'm like that's how an I hour on the bike is hard. So I was before I even if I'm guys. just on the bike for an hour, regardless if it's a, a, a fast or slow ride, like an hour is hard, but. An, the hour at this point for me will be basically like warm up levels of heart rate, honestly. So you said zone two. So like what, like the one ten to one twenty? So zone two is usually like around one thirty two to one fifty two for me, something okay. like that. So it's a little bit past like warm warm up would end probably in like the lower one thirty, something okay. like that. And Have you um, seen a drastic change in your resting? Yeah. For sure. What do you say in the resting or roughly around? Uh, I actually don't check like resting heart rate that steadily like that, but just through the exercising heart rate, things that would have spiked me before, the cadence that I can keep on the bike now would have cooked me, would have had me like <laughs> yeah. previous. And now it's I'm doing I'm pretty I'm for, doing pretty good. It's 45 minutes later and I'm at the same speed that I was. And I'm not gasping, I can just breathe through my nose, usually things like that. So um, way more into conditioning now than ever before. I really never had any. I, w- I was an athlete previously, but I never did. I never did track, and like baseball, basketball, football aren't basically conditioned sports. You you get little basketball, maybe basketball. You maybe you run a bit, but you're you're not really getting tired from running mileage or something like that. It's just like short stuff, and it's like athletic, you know. So now this is like another another world, another piece that I'm kind of adding to my coaching arsenal so like i know eventually i'd like to have a a hybrid coaching program that people can follow and do one-on-ones with like hybrid athletes once i feel more established and and i guess uh accomplished even like in my own in the times that i can run and 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 the the races and how i can place and things like that um so that's that's been really fun and just tying that into my older past of like bro lifting and bodybuilding and pure strength training and sciencey training and um, which is probably why you got into high rocks because it, it absolutely it was perfect it, it, it fuses all of those styles yeah, it, was, it was perfect and i'm like this is a i i don't compete with anything anymore the only other thing i competed with was jujitsu which lit me up to compete in a in a way that nothing else like the 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 nerves and the and the high and low and the training coming up to it and the and the way that it would like and, I, and I, it's funny because when I was doing the cryology, the cryotherapy, I would have so many of the UFC guys that would come in and they would start trying to take care of themselves a lot, like pre-fight when they were in their last few weeks. So they get tra- hard training, would like a lot of it would taper down and they just really start trying to get more cryo and doing the sauna and, and just kind of yeah, trying recovery. to take care of their self, basically. And it's becoming so, higher and higher in, in the priority list as time has gone on now. Yeah, absolutely. So they would just kind of like come, we would spend time together doing that. And um, how did we even get on this before? Jiu-jitsu. Right, yeah. So um, you said it lit a fire in you. Yeah, so I'm thinking to myself, I'm just training jiu-jitsu. And I don't know, these guys are out here getting freaking punched in the face and like possibly embarrassed, but I'm so nervous to compete. Like I, I and I, and I played, I, I, not high level, but Peter at like Suffolk County Championship, like decent levels of sport in, in high school, but I never was nervous. I was not, I'm not a nervous person. I was never nervous, but like the nerves before, even leading up to competition, but like on competition day, like the height of nerves and the it's not a regular role height anymore. of adrenaline and things like that was like whoa, like this is this is competing like that is nothing like I've done before, but this is like something that people need to do. Like this, this is something that will really open you up to yourself and and like controlling your your mind and your uh, your self talk and how to prepare for these things and like this is. So I and I was always competitive previously. So when I had gotten to jujitsu, that was the only time where I was like, "This is like nicely competitive," you know. And uh, I didn't really stick with it as much. I was a little bit on and off with training for the times that I trained. When I was in it, I'd be really in it, and I would put two, three hours in a day, five, six, seven days a week. And I competed a little bit, and I kind of got like that whatever they say that blue belt. Um, paradox of like everyone gets their blue belt and then they kind of just quit after it for the most part and that's like such my personality is get decently good at something where i can sit at the table and then i'm like oh this takes a lot of sacrifice to get to that level that is at the highest level of this and i can still i can roll with those guys it's not a competition really but like i can still like kind of kind of hang with them you know which is which is cool enough for me and i love the sport but it started getting really hard physically to keep up with the other things that i wanted to do as well like to still train. And I'm, I was like, I was always training with my dad. So that was always 
important to me and like foundational to me that I had this practice where I would strength train with my dad. And then having this new jujitsu practice, he actually would, he did it with me for a while, but same thing, like it was destroying him. Like, he physically, was so very, fucking physically beat up. He'd be like, my fucking neck. My, physically demanding. You know, like so much so. And we we trained like really hard, probably too, too hard in the sense of how, how beginnerish we were. We probably could have used a lot more technique work and, and things like that. But we trained really hard. It was really hard, I guess, to keep up with. And I was on and off with it for a little while. Um, and then I, I had gotten knee barred really badly and just like said fucking exploded my knee like Did very it? audibly loud like my shit popped on Monday really yeah yeah my shit popped on Monday my my right knee and yeah I, you know it's funny everybody that everybody that I talked to about it, even Tyler everybody I talked to about it they're like yo you seem to like have a new injury every week because my yeah. fingers are bad yeah, yeah, like yeah. shit like that and I just said I just said listen it's a fucking combat yeah. sport like it's kind of like hard training too where I I was really in the camp for a little while of of, of Picking methods that would make you injury free, like oh, these guys have the best like like knee. I was so into knees over toes guy for a little bit because I'm like he's gonna fix my knees and I'm gonna be like dunking basketballs with bulletproof legs, and it doesn't really work exactly like that. Like there's some good that you can take from it and and maybe some like not so useful stuff to it too. But um, I was for a little while like you should be pain free when you train and like these trainings must not be good for you if they're. If you're feeling like that, but realistically, anything that's worthwhile tends to beat you up like a little bit. And I was, dude, I was, when I first started out the gate, man, I mean, I've seen, I've seen crazy changes in the last three months. I mean, it's, it's insane just because I've been focused on my diet, focused on training, like every single morning hitting you guys, you know, sometimes I was going to Bev's here and there too. Yeah, it's it, hard. <laughs> and then I was, and I was rolling when I first started May 1st, I started jujitsu. I still don't have a stripe. I was rolling five days a week on top of training every single day. And I didn't give myself a rest day up until yeah. like maybe two weeks ago. <laughs> Bro, first day rolling, man. I've said it a couple times already. I The only thing I knew was holding on for dear life. Yep. Like I didn't of really course. know anything else. Yeah, I, yeah, of I course. had no fucking moves. So my third day- And you're doing gi a bunch too. Which yeah, is like, so yeah. my fingers are getting destroyed from the <laughs> yeah, gi. So yeah. it's like the third day they said, all right, you can roll now. So I was like ready to go. I had my mouthpiece ready yeah, and yeah. that. And the first kid that I rolled with, I was like, all right, man, I'm not letting you move. Like, I'm using my <laughs> yeah. strength. And I grabbed onto his go- his gi collar, and I brought him chest to chest with me. I pulled him into my guard, and we sat there for four and a half minutes. <laughs> he couldn't get me off him. He's like, yeah, dude, yeah. what the fuck is this grip? I'm like, yeah. bodybuilding, bro. I used yeah, to yeah. I used to deadlift 500 over double overhand, and I used to always grab like this, no wraps. Yeah, yeah. I used to always do this. So when they started saying, you grab over like that, I go, yeah, yeah. oh, shit, Perfect. I've been doing this. <laughs> this is great. But I didn't know that you're not allowed to rip joint. Like, it rip out individual fingers it's like it's it, you shouldn't do that so i'm holding him and he's ripping my thumb off see, yeah. Destro- yeah, yeah, yeah yeah of course destroying my thumb but i'm like thumb put the thumb back put uh-huh. the thumb back put the thumb back instead of just like letting him do it taking my grip off and because t- yep. my first time rolling i was yeah, like yeah. all right i'm gonna You're hold him here. Mode, yeah ever since man mode, in the yeah. insertion joint dis- dude right here destroyed my ligaments yeah, yeah. it hurt i i can barely hold a bar with the weight on my hand anymore like this yeah so that and then my knee on Monday. It's good. I, I was Yeah, mine is fine now. Honestly, when I got back into running, it actually flared it up a little bit weirdly, like two years later. Oh yeah. Nothing bothered it. But when I started running, I started getting that same that's it was like a very stiff feeling. I couldn't really squeeze my quad too much because Yeah, it was you like can't explain stiff it. on the outside. I couldn't really squat very well and like put too much weight on it, It'd just be very ginger. And, um, but it was, it was, it got, it was, it's fine. Yeah. Now, so obviously not a, know? not a crazy tear or a bad injury, yeah. but enough to be like, I think just oh, one of those, one of those ligaments bit. you don't need as much almost type of thing. Like, you know, like you can get away with kind of, Thank I think God evolution hasn't taken this from me yet. Where it just still works. Right. And, uh, well, dude, I, I pulled him into my guard. I pulled the kid into my guard and, um, I trapped his left leg with my right leg. I put yeah. it over and then I was kind of losing my left leg position. So I went to go stand up and I still had his leg down and then he went to stand up yeah, and we did over you, yeah. over under on the on the lock. And as we both stood up, my knee totally went to the floor and I felt pop right, and I went, yeah. oh, motherfucker. I said, I did not just do that. And I, it was my fault. It wasn't even his yeah. fault. It was my, I should have let go. When I got hurt too. So I just said, fuck it, man. So I, I, I literally got off the mats. I called my, my PT guy and I met one of my boys uh, over at LA Fitness and he did all the tests on me. He's like, you didn't tear anything. Yeah, you yeah, would know. Yeah. Like you didn't tear anything. And then I went to them the next day, a little sore, a little bit. Th- and even today, feels fine. Yeah. But a little tight. Something there, yeah. Something. Something happened. A little yeah, tight. Yeah. So that's been an interesting journey for me. It's I I, I was going to go to the midday class today again. 
I said, let me take another day off. I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to push it. So like, that's been something that I've had to yeah. work on. Yeah, so which that is put like, me on. I never got back after that. Well, you sent me the picture when you start. So I started rolling. You're like, oh, I want to get, come yeah, let's yeah, do I it, know. man. And I have so many, I, actually of my friends new and old now that are like, we'll sprinkle in. Hey, I go here. You should come, you should come let's here. Let's do like, it. You know? So yeah, I, I've been, me, I've been meaning to. It's more um, actually doing it, obviously. Yeah, and, and schedule working a little, bit, a little bit, starting to work it in. I know it's a little, it's a, it's a little pointless for me to just half do it and just say, oh, I'll just go when I can. Like it needs to, if it's gonna be something, then it's got to be like, okay, on Friday nights I go to the class that at this time and this is one, the one that I can make. Um, Sundays are open mats too at Sarah's. You could always yeah. come to Sarah's. We could yeah, just dr- we could just drill. Place. We could just do light drilling and yeah. shit like that. I would love to, dude. Um, I do want to talk about Wim Hof because I'm very interested. Yeah. The Wim Hof stuff uh, is very cool. It's very crazy to like look at the story of him and how he's – all the accolades and the different crazy things yeah. that he's done, the marathon runs, the fighting off the viral infections with the breathing yeah, techniques, so, yeah. training people to do it. Did you do the uh, seminar on Long Island? Did you go somewhere uh, specific? I was in the city. It was okay. just in some big gymnasium. And you met him there. And yeah, he kind of he, – he did – we did breath work together. He he played like a ukulele while we were all like laying out on the floor and he was like singing and shit. And they, they taught us how to do it beforehand. And I, I for sure had a – definitely like a – like a – what would be the word for it? Like a, not like a hallucination but like a very intense breath work experience with him where I was very like – I was, my body was just like buzzing. And I remember I had gotten up to like go to the bathroom kind of at some point, maybe like uh, before it was over, before like the breath work session was over. And I got back to like my mat. And I just remember thinking like, I don't even like remember walking over to there the bathroom just now. Like, I'm like so. It's almost like a high. Disoriented high, loopy. Like my, my hands are tingling so bad that they're un- like, it's uncomfortable. Like they're, they're shouting at me, my hands, like my body is like buzzing. Um, did you feel nervous at any point? No, no, but it was, no. it was just a euphoric he, type. Of- he's so, um, laxy daisy, fun, l- whimsical, like don't worry type of thing. So I, I think at one point he was like, like if you faint, like if you went into the light, like you just went like a little too far, but like, it's okay though. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like you're, you're okay. Like it's fine. You know? So I'm like, Oh, so like whatever, like people faint, I guess sometimes and shit like that. And like, I won't really worry about it. You were also just like basically laying down while you were doing all this shit. So, um, I, any, I wasn't personally faint? worried like that. I, I don't know, to be honest, maybe if they did, they blacked out, <laughs> but yeah, it wasn't right really like a thing, you know? So, um, when I was in whim, I'm like, this is the thing. Like if you just do this breath work, then you will never get sick and you can you can do any physical task basically you can like do arctic marathons and run with no shoes in the desert with no water yeah and like heal frostbite and heal viruses or like defeat them or like so on and so forth um and then i guess if you ask if you ask my honest opinion of it now i think like uh you those when when i got that feeling of like buzzing and like hallucinating like you definitely through playing with breath and oxygenation like you get delirious basically i don't think that this is like a a magical medical phenomenon that you're like enlightening yourself or something like that i think you basically take yourself to the brink of like uh i don't don't know i guess the, the science of exactly what's going on but i believe he also like gets co2 very high through this hyperventilatory practice almost like and to- dumps kind of oxygen while, hand while in you're hand with the it. ufc center what you a were little learning. bit yeah and I think his his practice is like a little bit different in why he's doing the specific breaths and holds and things like that. And I, I don't even remember exactly what the Wim method is now. I want to say it's a a bunch of hyperventilations with a with an inhale with an exhale hold followed by an inhale hold, something like that. And I forget the way that he framed it. Like you do the breaths to build something up, but then you dump it to let, and then you take the big inhale so oxygen gets flushed back in or something like that. But I actually don't think a lot of it's really rooted in like hard science or anything like that. I think breath work in general is 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 a really interesting rabbit hole to kind of go down. But it's a little bit funny to me almost when I see people now say, I'm doing breath work. And I'm like, we're just like breathing to cadences, basically. <laughs> we're not like, I don't know. Like I was in that camp before too. Like, we're all, I'm, like I'm, I'm doing this work, my inner work for myself. And I'm like, 
practicing this thing that's super spiritual and super like deep beyond me. And it can take me to this place where I get this in, in, insane, uh, tangible experience and, and euphoric and, and so on and so forth. And it's healing me. And it's, and it's, and like all the, all the things that Wim says, like it, you can do anything when you, when you kind of like tap into your breath and your own power. And it's like very Tony Robbins ish in a sense where like, for that. sure, like, these things are important and like you do always have breath to come back to, but they don't tell you a lot of a lot of the things that go wrong with the firewalks and with the Everest climbs on whims people. You just think everyone that does whim like it works and they get to the top and they all overcome everything. But like it doesn't it doesn't really work like that. Like on a lot of his Everest climbs, like people get very sick and they have to come back down and the breath doesn't quite take them through or a lot of people get adverse reaction when they do breath work like that like they faint or they like become delirious and disoriented and things like that and some other people are like oh you got it that's like the thing and like now i'm kind of like that's just happening because like you are putting your body in an environment that's going to make something like that happen i don't know that's something that that you should strive for more or less but i think uh this this other um i want to say i'm so mad that i can't think of the name of uh of the ufc breathwork people that i went to but it's brian mckenzie you try to google it yeah, if you looked up Brian McKenzie um, Breathwork, they have like a like a like a brand and a business behind it, and they kind of have some philosophy about like gears of breathing, like breathing gears. So yeah, it's like uh, that's that's part of their system is like breathing the, gear system. Brian McKenzie shift shift yes yeah, shift shift okay um, yeah so that yeah so they have this whole system of gears and how to kind of like b- breathe the best way to perform, and I think their their stuff is a little bit more rooted in like tangible practice like the breath work that you would be doing with them is a little bit more real work where you are kind of having an end goal that you're looking to like improve basically versus whim breath work for the most part is like it's either spun at you as something that's very spiritual that's going to like enlighten you almost or it's spun like this is going to be something that takes your physicality into another level of what you can withstand and and the feats of strength and endurance and things like and that you're going to be able with, to do. Pairing it with the cold water therapy. And right. And then that was like his other way that was the way that he described it in person was like the cold was like your window to see if your breath practice was working kind of type thing, because that will put you in, in the peak stressful environment where your breath becomes like paramount importance to control. And I also don't think that those things are really super important that they're tied together type of thing too like you definitely want to have control of your breath when you do ice but i think uh like when lenny previously did ice like we only knew wim hof so he would just like kind of give everyone wim hof and then it came to a kind of point i started learning some other methods where i'm like maybe wim hof isn't the best for everyone to be doing before they go in type of thing and it was like oh yeah you know what maybe you're right like or some of the other ice breathing uh, so shift method just has some other method of like slowing the breath down or like taking like cadence breaths to like certain cadences of like four in and four hold and like box breathing Boxy, or yeah, things like that or specific four in seven out type of things that are supposed to make your parasympathetic nervous system turn more on and not or activate vagal tone and like all these other kind of things basically but i don't th- i don't think that there's a lot of magic behind any of those numbers or or any of that work per se I think the shift guys and this other guy whose name is Brian Mirabella, the fruitarian guy, he works uh, under oxygen advantage, I think, or, or buteco breathing, which is basically CO2. Like uh, you're, the whole point is that you're boosting your CO2 levels and trying to become tolerant to to them. So that's your practice is basically do some sort of exhale hold work, whether you're like walking or you're doing little sips through the nose so you can kind of gradually start to like raise the, the levels type of thing. But that feels like a little bit more of like a tangible practice. So when you say breath work, I think that would be what I would offer now versus like, oh, go check out Wim Hof. Like that breath work is going to get you change to where you change your life. Yeah, like I think the ideas that Wim offers and the philosophy around he's very much like everyone deserves to be happy and positive and his personality is just you can do anything you want to do. And it's kind of Goggins-ish almost. But Goggins isn't like I can do it because my breath. He's like I can do it because I'm, it it I'm going to fucking not give into it, which is like I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how Wim does some of those things. I think there's obviously he has a lot of sp- special ability to tap into something that other people can kind of tap into as well. But there are plenty of other people that would say that his method is not – a super healthy thing to be doing or something that you should really strive for the way that he's 
trying to change the blood pH is not where the blood pH is meant to be, and all you're doing is acid uh, like creating high levels of acids in the blood, or so on and so forth. You know, so I just I think it just goes to show like there's other camps of of thought, and uh, as far as performance for breath, I think it could it could be helpful. So many times I've been, this is the thing. I'm going to start doing this shit and I'm going to be like at the highest level. And I think it can work, but I, I don't think anything's the thing anymore. I think you got to work really hard. And then more or less, you can, you can definitely get a lot. You can make a ton of progress from where you're at. But like there's not, there's not going to be some magic thing that just takes you to, to be the best jujitsu athlete in the world, except for putting lots of hard work and time with in jujitsu, hopefully having the right system, the right teachers to learn under that are going to progress you in the right way, but not in a magic way, just more or less like a system that works. And there's other systems that are going to work too. And, and jujitsu is a really nice example. I know a lot of people probably don't understand it, but a lot of guys have very systematic approaches to why they do what they do. And they have a leg lock system or a Kimura trap system or a uh, a back, a bat, a way to control the back, a and back how take. they like to enter into these things, and what how they like to react and respond, and and it's a little bit structured, and a, a lot of them are different, but they can get you to the to the same end goal, and and some of them are maybe the best, like because they get the best results. But I don't. This is this is this is how I see like fitness now, and how I see breathing now. Like a lot, I don't know. A lot of guys have things that they ways that they like to train it. And some maybe work and some maybe not. And hopefully there's some science behind or at least some rationale between why they're telling you to do what, what you'd hope so you're doing, you know, and, and there's not always sometimes even as a coach, I'm like, it's just something different, something fun and different. There's nothing special about the order that I put them in or anything like that. It's just something different that might work well for you. You might connect well to this or, or not kind of type of thing. Um, but yeah, I, I think breath is like maybe the la- the last edge that'll get you like the last few percent. I think cardio is obviously very improve- important, but you're not going to take a guy that sits on his couch and give him breath work and then he's going to be an ultra marathon runner. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think we get, or I, I I'm very guilty of getting bought into these systems of this guy's got the recipe for me to ha- do breath work that's going to take my marathon running to the next it's level. Necess- it's not necessarily being duped. It's just falling sometimes for good marketing as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's what they're paid to do. They're and sometimes paid- it works for people. Like yeah. typically if you train anything really well, you get some – Well, it's a sweat so equity. Forward progress. It's the sweat equity it, right. and the sweat yeah, hours. I yeah. mean the amount of time that I've put on the mats for jujitsu has substantially accelerated me in knowledge base and the ability to do things that I couldn't even think about. Right. Dude, I, I, I go against some of these wrestling dudes – and like before I did jujitsu, I would never have been able to handle these fucking guys. I still can barely handle them. Mm-hmm. I'm 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 a I'm a I'm a baby bitch yeah, in this yeah. in this jujitsu world, and I'm okay with that. Like I, I don't want to. I I tell people like, well, I joke around all the time. Like some of the guys are going to be like, oh, you don't have a stripe yet? I go, yeah. I don't want a stripe. <laughs> yeah, take my time, I, dude. <laughs> yeah. The, the longer I don't have a stripe, the less people I, expect of me. I, I agree. Yeah. I am good on that. I, agree. I am not in a rush to get any type of belt. I'm yeah, not yeah. in a rush. The progression has to just come as it comes. I never want to be the guy that's a blue, purple, brown belt that never and actually. I was like, oh, was like, oh Nick's a fucking brown <laughs> yeah, belt. Oh yeah, god, exactly, he's, yeah. he's getting tapped out by white belts. Uh-huh. That's crazy. Like I know I don't want to be that guy. I, so I'm with you. You know, being able to put all this time in and learn. I mean, it's insane just putting the hours in. Mm-hmm. What I've been able to like understand, and then like, listen, there are still moments, often when I have a guy that goes um, north south on me. And I'm sitting here put, framing and I go, I, I don't know how to get out of this. Yeah, so like yeah. I'm just going to flail a little bit and uh-huh. maybe try to buck him off of me and and, and yeah. shoot my legs under back under. But I'm not supposed to have the answers. Right. So I have to understand that There's the, levels. that's the point of the journey. Yep. So it's like I have to be able to – I have to get comfortable with not being where I I think I should be because where I think I should be is not necessarily where I should be. I agree. Um yeah, it's just a crazy, it's a crazy thing. It's a crazy journey. And and speaking of journey, I want to talk about High Rocks because I guess this is where you're currently at and this is where your attention yeah, yeah. is in the training. This is like a nice avenue for me to just express. Yeah. Uh, what was that like seeing that and deciding like that's what I want to get into now because this is what my training has been either tailoring and funneling into and now I can actually yeah, have yeah. an outlet to so compete So like we in touched that. on the com- competition aspect of jiu-jitsu and I'm like, this is cool. This is a, com- a, a competition now and – I could have ran before. So this is, Hyrex is a race, but it's like, oh, now there's some elements of like 
maybe some of my strong suits that I can race against other guys and and I I enjoyed CrossFit before but I had to like kind of accept that I that I wasn't going to be the best CrossFitter because those guys are just like honestly just on another level they're just incredible fucking athletes that are really good at the at multiple disciplines and I think I just got a really late start into trying to even like manage a few things like by the time I was I don't know 20 for all I had ever done was like some regular bodybuilding until then. I never had I never had track background or I never ran or so I had some athletic background, but I never I never Olympic lifted. I never tried to get mega mega strong like that. So like to get into that world, there was a lot of there was a there was a big obstacle of I, I can't keep up with them right now, and it will take like a lot of time investment if I'm ever gonna be kind of in that category. But I don't even think I want to make the sacrifice that it would take to put in so much work to be like the best Olympic lifter like that, to be able to keep with the, up with them strength wise and then also be able to keep with them running and so, and so on. So CrossFit, I did for a little while and it was like, cool, because you can compete with that as well. And and it was like doing the open and things like that. So you'd compete with people like across the country. But I'm with the buttery bros a lot. What? With the Buttery Bros, they're the, they're the dudes that have the channel. They used to shoot for CrossFit. Okay. They have their own channel, Justin Madero. So yeah, I'm with, yeah. I'm with so those okay. guys a lot, dude. They're fucking freaks. Yeah, so, like, they're freaks, yeah. And, like, I wasn't really, like, so interested in it that I was going like, to commit my life to being a CrossFit athlete. I just liked that. Oh, this is cool. I can compete in something again. Because after college or high school, really, like, there's not competition's not really normal anymore. You don't really – you like, compete to, like, get jobs and shit like that. You don't really compete physically or, like – any bit against somebody else or against groups of people to try to like beat them in score or time Which or anything like we that should be absolutely because like it keeps I said with sharp. the competition of jujitsu you're just like and that's a physical one so I think it's a, it's in a special pocket of it's different when you're going against somebody in trivia versus when I'm lining up against you like one of us is going to try to choke each other and I'm grabbing and, that and leg put you on a highlight <laughs> reel grabbing like that leg type of thing yeah like that's a different level of like oh, oh my god like this is something I need to like really, really be, be ready for. Um, but competition, yeah, it was like, it's, it's big, it's big for me. It keeps me, I don't feel like there's much to do it for if it's, if it's not, if that's not there. And even if I'm just not maybe competing in a sanctioned way, but I need to have my own numbers that I'm like, I need to beat that squat from last week, or I, I need to have like end, end goal somewhere. This is what I want to run a marathon time in or something like that. So the comp the competition was big for me, and then there was this big gap of a few years, basically from I probably competed jiu jitsu in like 2018, maybe 2019, maybe the absolute latest. Then still trained after it, and I probably stopped like around 2020 COVID. So then there's this gap now of like two, three years, three years basically, where I'm just like I'm I'm a washed up like old competitor. Like there's nothing for me to compete in anymore. I could go join some, I could join powerlifting or something, and go to local meet. Or or go to a bodybuilding show and be a competitor or something like that. But I'm like my my competitive years are like are are done pretty much now. And even even my participation as like athlete or racer or something like that. Like oh those those years are kind of behind me. And then starting to see some of these guys do this thing now. I'm like oh this is this is something a little bit different that maybe I could be like decently good at. Like I don't, I don't know about being the best because I these with all respect to these guys now that are the best at high rocks like. They're fucking impressive too, how fast they can run and and the paces of the exercises they they can keep and and how strong they are like on their movements kind of outside. Um, and I did the battle. I tried to do the battle bunker, which is like a high rocks ish. Uh, it's just like a hybrid, I should say, competition. And it made me realize like, geez, these dudes are like squatting in the five hundreds. For it was a it was a it was a three rep max squat and shoulder press, and it was a one mile for time, and it was like some functional burpee thruster workout and i'm like oh i did a six minute mile i squatted 315 for three like it was like a regular easy set like probably could have done a little bit more but i was happy with it because i'm like all right i'm running a six minute mile i'm squatting three plates like guys probably that are faster than me probably aren't maybe squatting so much and i'm sure guys have some big squats but they're probably not that fast like i'm feeling good about my times and i'm looking at the leaderboard and i'm like oh my god i'm like not only are these dudes running, obviously, sub six, but some of them even sub five, but they're squatting easily like 450 plus, <laughs> oh, 500 for, for three on, a, on like a regular day and doing them like one after another. So I was like, oh, fuck, like I got actually a long way to go. And like, I know I can kind of hit these things with time because I don't have any background to running. So I know I'm a little bit of ways of way, like a six minute mile to a five minute mile is fucking it's a long way away. And then to get sub five is a 
a longer way even from there too. But I'm like, all right, I never ran before and I can do six. So maybe I can, with enough time, like be on, the, pretty be well. on the map with these guys. And you don't need to necessarily be the best. If I could just be in contention, it would be pretty cool. So I, the, the first one that I did was a Miami one. And uh, the way that High Rock sets their race up, you get like a certain amount of people that can qualify for the world championship based on how you place like in your age bracket of the race. And honestly, just through like a stroke of fate, the age that I was in, if I was younger or older, I wouldn't have got it. But I took first in the race and got to go to Manchester to do like the world championship, basically, where I was like s- small fish in a, in, a, in a big pond. Like these dudes were just uh, like on another level than me. Like, I was like legit like the slowest person almost in that building that day. But just seeing like, all right, like I'm kind of early in this, but I'm getting like little crumbs of like you're doing well. And um, so I did – Only those two races previously, I did one regular race and then I did the world championship, which I came in like, I forget how many people were in my age, maybe like 65 or something. I came in like 60th place or something. Didn't come in last though. So literally when I was going, I'm like, just don't come in last. last. And people are like, oh, you're probably going to win. I'm like, no, you don't understand. These guys are like, I know what times I can run. I know what times they can run. They're not the same times. You know, I can't just show up and accidentally catch an arm bar on this guy. Like he is a lot faster than me. Two minutes a mile pace faster than me and i'm not strong i'm not he's probably stronger than me too honestly like so um but anyway i got like a nice little sprinkling of all right this is this is something that i might be kind of pretty good at uh and then me and ev did new york as a double and we were we were one minute from getting that invite to next year's world championship because there was three spots at the age that we were the age in the the bracket that kind of we were in and we took fourth so um, he's kind of on board with it a little bit now, too, but he's also doing his triathlon stuff and, and whatnot. But for, for me, pretty much, this is like what I'm kind of training for full time now. So it, it's nice that when 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 things have a purpose for me, because if I'm just running to run, I'm like, I, I don't know, like my goal was the six minute mile. And I basically hit a six minute mile, I hit like a 601 which I got to go back and do the sub six just to like cement it. And I want to ho- hopefully do a five minute mile like eventually in a, in a year or two, maybe. But this is pretty much like what I, what fires me up a little bit now is like hybrid racing and these hybrid sport or fitness competitions where there's like tests of everything. There's some weightlifting, but there's some speed, there's some cardio to it. There's a toughness like element to some of it. And it's competitive directly against other people. And there's cool like community to it and there's kind of like leaderboard and and there's a lot of these elements that i that i really enjoy like that i was not getting anything of in in pure fitness and like weightlifting you know so and it's cool how that can re-spark the excitement oh yeah so now i'm like oh i'm not washed up anymore now i'm like i'm almost in my prime i just turned 30 like dude you're killing i should get a couple years now so all right maybe when i'm 32 34 if i just do this for like a few years i'll I could put some numbers on all those strength lifts and I could kind of like trim the, the the cardio times down. So like like you said running is new. Running, running is, is new, new for you. Yeah. Like you're already in those times. I still types get all the times. beginner gains from it, which is like nice and it's actually a little bit now to the point where like I've like been a little better than maybe I am right now before like there's a little bit of high and low to it now yeah. versus initially it was just like every session was better because yeah, which is usually how it goes when you first start right, like you it. just get stronger every or you feel stronger every session because you haven't even done anything yet so like any input gives you result for a little while and uh, so I t- actually stopped weightlifting for like probably like two three months when I first started training for the high rocks and I was just like I'm gonna train to be a runner so I hired a running coach like train with Frank coach Frank and I would Shout just do, Coach yeah, four to four, five, six days a week of just like running and maybe some of the zone two stuff on a bike here and there, but it was like just running. And I spent a few months doing just running. And then I was like, all right, now I need to really start to try to tie all this stuff back in together because I haven't lifted weights at all now. So if I'm going to be like the hybrid athlete that I want to be, then it's not just going to be just high rocks. I'm going to be able to go and compete in this battle bunker shit or some of these other things that are going to ask me to do like 315 rep max deadlift after I just ran and did some crazy burpee conditioning style, like workout type of thing like that. Um, so it, it keeps me on my toes, which is really nice. Cause I'm like, I don't, you kind of have to be ready like for a little bit of anything. So I'm, I'm running, but I'm skiing and I'm, and I'm rowing and I'm riding the bike and I'm starting to get back into more athletic movements and things like that and doing plyometrics and like kind of jumping around and doing mobility work to get, more flexibility in my hips, like Juju Mufu 
weightlifting combined with mobility Dude, nuts, work, man. you know, things like that. And old school, old, older style strength lifts that they used to do that aren't squat bench dead anymore. And this blending of, of all these like worlds that I've spent time in all the little boxes. And now I'm like, Oh, I got free reign to kind of choose what's going to work in this, in this training program. So then I kind of got a, uh, from running now, I'm just basically doing hybrid, hybrid. Uh, hi- I have a hybrid athlete coach, and I do hybrid athlete training, which is basically like m- strength training with cardio conditioning, more or less. And then hopefully, I'll start to add back in real sport again, like jujitsu. And hey, we got to roll together, man. I want yeah. to. I want to. Yeah. But so. isn't that cool how all that trickles down into your business? It's cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's cool. How you I, create, I even, have you been able to shape and create your world to be like that? I think for the future, it'll even get more powerful where I'm like, oh, we have jujitsu at the gym on these nights. And like, you can come to my spot and do jujitsu in my spot. And, and we'll have whatever other sport that I want to start to integrate there. We'll have a basketball court and a tennis court and do classes and have a gym and then have food on the island. Like, that would be my, my, uh, like end and end and end as you see it building of, yeah yeah as you see it building into like a complex into right. something that is right that's how i would see it like yeah a complex. Multi, multi-sport multi Super multi-faceted multi-area lots of things going on and then i can just kind of be there and be uh participating actively in all these things alongside people and also have like leadership role and coach role and and um it's the high rocks thing is cool because i'm obviously a, like a, a coach for a lot of people high rocks now but i also compete like along alongside them, basically. So there's a, a really cool camaraderie about you know how, about competing with your teammates and and going to battle together, and some of us winning and some of us losing, and then going back to the training room after, and and, and other people being fired the tools up and, and the resharpening weapons. the tools and figuring out where do, where do we need to what do we need to fix, and everybody kind of helping each other in that sense. So um, and then I'm trying to feed that into the gym now, where I'm like, we, guys, we got to order more ski ergs so that we can work on the training a little bit more specific and and then like evan getting into it too then that kind of training starts to maybe trickle in where you see like wall balls in class where maybe we weren't doing that type of shit before but it's kind of like hey we'll keep you ready to do this event now but also like i'm gonna make you do this shit too in case we want to do a a powerlifting competition we also need you competent for that um so that that's like the beautiful thing about where where we're at is that oh i'm really excited about this look what I'm doing. And then, oh, that that's actually pretty cool too. I'm going to start doing a little bit of that too. And then like, we're kind of feeding each other. I mean, I've linked up the other day. We did like speed work, track, track work. Cause he's kind of doing his thing and I'm doing my thing. And I'm like, all right, I'll do, I'll do track work with you. And even the jujitsu, I used to, one of the things that I liked the most about it is that when I would travel or things like that, it was something that I could always connect with people in the area on basically, or, or a friend that was like, doing it doing it too like that would be something that we can kind of connect on and uh it's a it's a very intimate practice where it's not like you're not just in the gym together you're like very actively doing things together teaching each other helping each other learn by you you doing something that I didn't know and or you explaining to me something or you're just like tapping me and me being oh like now I got to work on defending against this, or he really likes to do this a lot, and and kind of having that. Um, I love an Americana. That partnership. I but, love an Americana. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, and then everyone's got their own games and their own system and their own coaches, and that would be so cool for me to kind of like tap in other people and learn what they were doing. And so I'm, I'm visiting my boy Vinny down in uh, North Carolina at the end of the month, and I'm also going to visit my buddy Jeff. Shouts to them. Uh, next month. September. I actually have to go to CrossFit uh, next week in uh, Madison, Wisconsin. Yeah. I'm shooting out there next week, so that that'll be cool because I'll Sick. be with all those guys again. Um, but um, it's cool because I started looking at the jujitsu gyms in the area in yeah. North Carolina because yeah. I want to go to Open Mat. I want to go roll with some of these other guys at like the Renzo Gracie, Renzo yeah, Barra, yeah. like all these different schools because it's different. Yeah, in town because I live in the village. I was telling you, mm-hmm. in town there's a spot called Ohm. Yeah, so yeah, I know. Mar- I know Mark. I used to train with Mark. So I tra- I rolled with Mark. Yeah. So Mark, I was walking by with Kenji, and he knows that I train. So he's like, "Yo, I got a couple of the guys from Tenth Planet coming by for an open mat and a few." Yeah. He's like, "You know, we're gonna do this, and then we're gonna go in the back and just hit the ice plunges." Yeah, and, this yeah. and I said, "I, I it was Amazing, supposed to be an man. off day too." I looked at my watch. He's, I was like, "What time?" He goes, uh, 10, 10 o'clock." I go, uh, nine o'clock." I go, mm, twenty minutes, huh?" I said. <laughs> All right, I'll be right back. Yeah, like I dropped the dog off. I, w- I fed him and I went right back and I rolled with them for a while. And it was cool because I got to roll with different people and it was different. It was like mm-hmm. y- you can't ex- you you can explain it, but you can't. Like you have to actually get in the trenches and do it. 
Like to actually roll with the same guys over and over again that are learning the same shit from your school is one way. But then you start going to other places where they're not as conventional or they're yeah, trained, yeah. They're trained they different things. Systems, and yeah. you look at it, you're like, oh shit, like, okay, this dude's really good at this. Uh -huh. Let me work on getting out of this position. And I was wrestling this kid. I forget his name. Um, I, I We followed each other on Instagram after because I wanted to... I wanted to roll with him again. Yeah. And he was like really fucking good. Like yeah. it was awesome. But I gave him a run for his money in certain positions because uh -huh. I'm a little stronger in certain areas. But like he would bounce right back and I'd be like, oh shit. So now I got to bounce back. Uh -huh. And you kind of raise That's each other to thing. the next level. But no animosity. That's the best part. There was no anger. There was no like, if he taps me, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bitch. I'm a lesser man. It's like, all right, let's get yeah, right. Do Yo, it again. Let's go right back in. Let's go. Let's go. Out and like, yeah. And sometimes, you know, I'm I'm locked up in something. I ask somebody, I go, yo, real quick, don't move. How would I get out of this? Like, yeah, wow, yeah. what what am I looking for? And some of the older higher belts would be like, well, theoretically, you'd want to do this. I go, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do that. You know it's coming yeah. now, so I'm still gonna get yeah, fucked yeah. up, but you like, I'm gonna try too, to do it's it. It's too late. Yeah, yeah but you should have done it. And this I'll still before, try yeah. it. And then they, you know, they defend it because they yeah. know they told me exactly what I was gonna do, but it's really cool to learn like that. That's why I've been enjoying it. You know, I've, I've always done bodybuilding. I, I played tournament paintball for years. I did, you know, things that were not as direct. I didn't do combat sports. So for me to be face to fucking face, chest to chest with another human being, and you're like trying to, it's, it's body chess. You're trying to figure these moves out and you're trying to stay one step ahead of them while they're trying to stay one step yeah. ahead of you. It's a very different world. Hard, yeah. And that's why I've been enjoying it. Uh -huh. It's really cool. Yeah, I, I agree. It will hook you. It's really cool. Now, let me ask you this. With all this training, high rocks, just, you know, your your background in all your different training styles and breath work and just life. Yeah, super mixed bag. How do you feel right now? You feel good? Yeah, I'm I'm um I'm very much roll rolling right now. I'm I'm I, I really th I think momentum feels very tangible for me. Like I'm very aware of like when I have it or when I'm like fighting against it or like there's been times that I've had it and I've been aware of it and I've been like, I got to roll. You got to get it while the getting's good and just got to kind of roll. And then other times where I'm like, damn, how did I, how did I do all that stuff before? Like now I'm not, I don't have any of these things in my, like even just recently kind of right before I started running, I'm like thinking back to when I'm training jujitsu and I'm like, man, I was like running and I was strength training and I would have the jujitsu session. And like now I don't really have any super solid practice. Like I just kind of work out a few days a week. And uh, like, how was how was I doing that before? And um, it's just because you just get the momentum, you just kind of keep adding one more piece, and it's really easy. A lot of times, you just insert one more, one more step, one more training session throughout the week on a time that's free, and you just put it on the map, and it becomes a part. It becomes a part of your your daily routine. Oh, on on Saturday, on Sundays, I go to open mat at twelve o'clock. Like that's normal for me. But now, but I'm out of it now, so that momentum to get back into it is like I can feel it, and I can I'm like staring it in the face of like. I know what I have to do, but I'm not. I'm not in the swing of it right Staring now. At the summit right now. Right, yeah. So, right now, I, I definitely feel like I'm in the. I'm in. I'm in it. I'm in the role. Things things are good. They're bubbling. It's always getting better. And there's always like shit in life that like comes up and comes and goes and little little like fires that you have to put out. I think and way less frequently nowadays. I think than my my past job and just even just my past life before. I just feel like now things are quite smooth and i think i'm pretty pretty uh pretty good at cultivating like the pots that i want to grow and just avoiding things that i just feel like are not for me and how i spend my, i think i'm i i'm 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 pretty busy now and it's hard enough to put things in my own schedule for myself so when it's other people asking me to do things i'm i'm very much more cautious now of like that I just can't, I can't do that. Like, I'm not going to take that tasks on. Like I, I'm, I, 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 so I can't start that podcast with you. I don't have time. I, I would love to, but like, I'm not, I'm not going to be a part of this. I'm not going to say yes to this and go start to put myself here on something. That's not really like lighting me up. Like, Oh, I have, I have time to be the guest and I'll like come and shoot the shit, but I, I'm not going to go and do production and do all these things on the outside. So I, I think I'm in a better place now of, of cultivating my my time and my space and what people I want to be around. And I think that's why I think things feel really, really good right now. <laughs> like I, I didn't just stumble upon a good life, I think. But I, I did in other ways. I think I, I definitely was like very fortunate for the for the people that came into my life. But a lot of it seems like fadish in a sense where I think if you just put just keep doing the right things and showing up and putting yourself like um in the right in the right circles and and being a good person like not burning a bridge when when you don't need to or 
or um, previously the way that my mind worked was like, where, where can I, where's like an opportunity for me to like fill a gap that I can make money out of it. So I would just, I was, I had my entrepreneurial thing with the, with the cryo and I would just look for other opportunities. So I'm like, oh, I could start like a CBD company. So I'll like start a little CBD company. I'm like, oh, I could do like graphic design because I know how to use Photoshop. So like there's an opportunity. And I would just kind of keep picking all these little things that were like not super in alignment with what I wanted to do or anything. I just kept trying to find ways to fill time that were like productive for me. And then now things have definitely honed into more of like, I have a very, not rigid, but I, but I really know and understand when specific trajectory opportunities are, are like, yes, this is going to be something that's good for me. And it's just something that I want to add to my life. And that I want to start to do this practice or like, no, I don't, I'm not really, I don't really care to start that supplement company. Like it's just not in, in alignment with what I want to do right now, or I just don't have the time for it or, um, so I, I think, uh, yeah, things are, things are, things are, are really good. And I try to tell Evan Lenny too, like, I want to try to really, really, cause I'm not a reflective person, but I'm trying to really, really reflect on, on what's happening right now. Cause I know as we continue to grow, we'll probably only get busier and maybe, maybe, maybe get closer, but possibly even get f- further in a sense that there's more tasks, there's more roles. So we have one place that we can meet now, but what happens when there's two or when there's three or four or five, if that, if that's the way that we go or not, but then it, things become a little different. So I'm like, we have it, we have it so good now that I want to try to appreciate like live the, in the moment, the moment that we have here and, and the day to day and things, things feel really like, uh, just very good and positive, like all the time now. And the people that were around, like, this is like almost like a problem for me because if I get stressed in my life, I'm like, it shouldn't exist almost. The people that come to me come because they, fitness is a, it, it, the gym space is interesting because people are coming there because they want to get better. It's not like a, a food store or a movie theater or some other business that people go to because they, they just need something that's going to like self-serve them in a way. Like this is very, very productive. So people generally that are coming here are very much seeking to better themselves. They want to be around different people than they were with before. They're seeing something here that like, this is the place that's going to get me further. These, these coaches and these people and this training, like this is going to be good for me. So everybody that's coming is genuinely coming because they want to be there. They're, they're not only coming, but they're willing to pay and, and they're willing to do whatever we say is going to be like good, good for them. And they, and they, and, and I think everyone does this in some industry. You just trust a professional. Like, I don't know cars, so I'm going to bring my car to the mechanic. And I'm going to let him. Hopefully, I can trust him. And I can just take his word that whatever's broken is broken and he needs to fix it. But I'm not going to go and learn all that stuff on my own. I'm going to leave it in this guy's hands. And with the gym, it's very much so something that's, like, so uh, so in line with self-growth. Like, that's why people are coming because they want to get they, – they're seeking – results and progress and 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 good like they're seeking good you know so when things are stressful like on the outside if it's like a person or something like that I'm like there, there's no room for this like everybody that's coming to me wants to speak with me they want to learn they have something good to offer and when people come to the gym they aren't bringing like the negativity in their outside lives i, I mean maybe in the general gym space but i think generally people come in that door and they will leave a lot fucking happier than they came in and feeling a lot better and feeling like they're getting, they're on their way. Like they're in the, they're in the right place. It's just time needs to kind of like to pass enough. You need to keep showing up. And I think everyone's very trusting that like you see all the other people doing it and everyone's m- moving along and you're like, all right, like this is what I just need to do is just, is just kind of show up to this. So I think that is like, I don't know the, the word like magical that we have this this physical body of a space that will we built it and people came and it and it and it continues like a moth light to like attract people that are seeking more light and they don't really want to get sold bs like they don't they're not looking for like secret more or less they just want to be around they want to be a part of it and they're and they're proud to be a part of it they want to like represent it and 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 they're proud to tell other people that th- that they do it, and I'm like, this is this is just like a really good thing. So I don't I don't reflect very much, but I I kn- I, I know I I, I, feel, I feel it, you know. Obviously, it's very it's very fucking like it, 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 it bubbles you. <laughs> My man said he doesn't like to reflect very much. He just gave the best closing <laughs> reflection statement of how his life and business is going. Yeah, so things are good. That's amazing, dude. Well, things are good. I want to thank you. For sitting down, I appreciate chopping it up bro. with me. I'm happy to be here, <laughs> dude. For real, it was it was it was awesome. You're yeah. you're awesome. Yeah. I'm glad I got to know you better because like 
I feel like you're the the quiet one at OG. No, and, you're right. I was actually like, like I don't know how this is gonna go because it's. Have you ever seen Nardwar on 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 uh, yes. YouTube? He he comes with like things where the 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 uh, the interviewee is like, "How did you know that about me?" Yeah. You know, like, and I'm like, "We we don't know we don't know each other beyond like a, a few a little short Just time and, and, and the Evan's space podcast. and kind of some of the common interests that we might have and things like that." So I'm like, I'm not, um, I, I don't know what to, I just, I talk when people ask me about something, but I'm like, not a, not a, uh, nah, let me tell you, a you, small talker or like an icebreaker or something like that. So I'm, I'm glad that, uh, you're phenomenal dude, for real. This um, one, okay. How can people follow you? Uh, if you know, they want to follow the journey, high rocks, and obviously a lot of people know OG. So if you want to just plug the information for the business, yeah, just yeah, tell yeah, them I how mean, to follow you. OG training Academy, Lindenhurst. Um, at OG Training Academy, that's that's the HQ. That's that's the uh, the team, the brand that I'll stand behind. And uh, I I also am a personal coach, so I'm I'm trying to kind of build that avenue as well. Um, I have I have two online programs right now that people can just sign up for. They're ten dollars a month, uh, so super super cheap. I just try to get yeah people on board that just want to like learn my stuff. And I think uh, I. I think I'm pretty confident that I definitely like over deliver value just based on what I've paid in the in in the world. I think I'm very much just trying to uh, just to share and, and serve other people at something that I feel like I'm I'm kind of good at and that I think that I can help them with. So I do my own. Uh, I, I would just the Realty Fresh is my Instagram, and that's how you'd kind of get into my my app. You can train with me in person. I have my Strong class, which is basically my. My, my strength program that I write that you can do in person, but I have like maybe 20 people that I teach that to online that are that are kind of part of the group. And then I have a female kind of, not a female only, but it's a female geared bodybuilding program. And then I think uh, next would be like, I'll have a male bodybuilding program. That's just what I grew up on is, is bodybuilding. Um, and then the last uh, box that I would like to check would be like a hybrid. I'll be like a hybrid coach, but I think I, I would like to be a little bit more accomplished in the space first. You're way on your you're well on your way, man. Uh, that's where I'm at I'm in that cultivation phase right now where I'm just putting I'm laying the daily bricks and uh we'll see we'll see what it becomes, I guess. That's amazing, dude. At the end of it. it. Listen, amazing journey and it's only up. Yeah. You got a lot good, more good, shit to conquer, good days bro. Ahead. <laughs> For real. So, uh I appreciate everybody fucking with us, hanging out. Right, cool. Thank you. Episode 61 with my man Taylor. Amazing. Tons of knowledge bits, man. If y'all didn't pick something up, you gotta go re-listen. It's crazy. Appreciate that. Though. But I appreciate you. Thank you, man. And on that note, peace. Adios.